come from shame uh, So why you tryna give me occupation? Uh, my nigga, I ain't hate I ain't hate nah. And my nigga, I ain't lazy I ain't But lazy. I know hoagies and some cold-blooded killers Right down to these, so why should I be patient? Uh, I feel uh, like Babylon and generates B8 With clear sense, uncommon, can you see straight? Freeze frames by the blocks in the deep state Shattering kaboom! If he dies, he dies. For more, and don't bother me. Oh, yes, ladies and gentlemen. What is up? 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 Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Right now, if you're in Australia, I'm joking. I'm joking too, by the way. Uh, this is your man, Prince Solomon, along here with your girl, Sincere. What's up? Bitch, don't bother me. Watch how you bitch, 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 don't bother me. You know, you know what? I'm saying? Let me let me get out of here, man. We, it's all black. It's all black, like Kendrick Lamar. All right, yo, what's up, everybody in the chat, too, by the way, that decided to slide in. Y'all know how it is. Look, we got to talk about it. We got to talk about it, you all. Drake is angry right now. I'm upset. Drake is angry right now. I'm upset. He's angry, y'all. I mean, he ain't trying to cut. Can't go 50-50 right. with no hope. Shout out to the wonderful people, too, by the way. And listen, um, as you can see, uh, get over to our Patreon. We're going to continue this coverage. We have other dynamics here concerning exclusive commentary on our patreon uh yeah, where we can get a little bit freer and we, we can't really go too much here on walt disney youtube we got put your chain on 
to the crackers out there with Nickelodeon, Woody Allen, all that. That will be on Tuesday on YouTube. And we also got the conversation on Monday at 7.30 p.m. as well with Ye finishing off Drake, what's going to happen with this uh, war and beef. But yes, on our Patreon, we also will be talking more about uh, esoteric knowledge, what's going on in the industry, things that people don't want to really talk about or touch on because uh some people are scared so anyway we're going to be dropping some gems on that again exclusively esoteric tear uh we're thinking about doing that maybe tomorrow uh at 7 uh, 30 on our patreon exclusively but we'll let y'all know what what day we'll be dropping our exclusive stream pertaining to the esoteric knowledge we'll go over there right now sign up uh you see a lot of people talk about shit after we talk about it we talked about Kendrick having a single ready also shout out to night night then some other people started to say it and it gets shit on rap tv and other hip-hop publishing platforms but you know we understand that people like to take points from the real and fake it off as if they were the first ones to say it but it's okay it's okay we're gonna keep it pushing yeah so look let's get into the real commentary here too by the way y'all know how it is because you and I know it's the best side here you guys come here to hear the hip-hop commentary, so that's what we're about to do. We're about to get into it. Listen, people were saying, man, I don't think Drake got nothing in the tank. I I, I, I just don't feel Drake is going to do anything. And uh, Matter of fact, this is Drake recently right now. I, I don't know if you guys have seen the clip or not, but he's he's very upset. L- listen to this real quick. Listen, listen, listen. Listen, listen to that. Listen to what he's saying. Did y'all hear that? Did you hear that? Drake is up here cursing. He says, look, man, I don't know what J. Cole talking about. This ain't Will Lindium. I ain't Will Smith. Now, Drake is very agitated and irritated because here's the wonderful thing about Kendrick Lamar in future. You know, uh, you know definitely Kendrick Lamar. We'll decided, you, yeah, he decided to troll this man while he's in the middle of a tour. I, we said the same thing happened during his arena cycle with um, Ye and Pusha T. Yeah. They trolled him during his album, uh, uh, when he was working on the album. He in the said, middle uh, of it. what did he say? He was, I'm in Alamo. I'm in Alamo. I bring calicos to the Alamo. Right, that's what he said. And they got his ass right when he right. was mentally split. Got yeah. him. Just they like they, they doing it right now. He's on stage. Drake can't even. Can't it, focus on the tour. Well, he can't even enjoy Sexy Red like he used to. <laughs> you know you know what I'm saying? Like, Drake is out here. You know, the therapist, they said, Drake, every time you get angry, you get upset, you get stomach pains. Why don't you just live your best life? He said, you know what? I will. Sexy Red, you want to come on tour with me? Man, I'm just going to hang out with J. Cole. Right? <laughs> Not Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Lamar says, nah, ah, man. So, you know, it's very interesting what's going on right now. Drake is out here. Now he's saying with this one here, uh, again, uh, looking like Lil Flip's little brother. Uh, he's talking about he's in L.A. right now. And look what he got on. He got on uh, Mac Dre, Fizz Nation. Shouts out to Fizz Nation. So he in troll mode. And I want to say this real quick um, to, to my OVO people that follow us and also to the people who love Kendrick. I don't think control was overrated. I don't think, like, even when people say Duppy was overrated, I don't think that was overrated. I do think a lot of people try to underestimate or disrespect a lot of the millennial MCs that came out, and a lot of them did a lot of great things. And I think that control uh, was a really good verse because it ag- it made people ass itch. And that ass is still itching to this day because of that. But just like, you know, the presence of Drake and the fiery verses, he's dropped and shit like that, that made people upset so you saw how diddy was crying over zero to 100 and everybody know uh diddy old ass could not uh carry that type of of, of track that's how many years they're gonna get that nigga if if zero to 100 years right Can, when it comes to your enemies or people who are competition you talk about drake competitor being kendrick that's wonderful for him push a t yay look when you're when your enemies or opponents are people who are going to always be in the history of the culture. You made it. Just well, the same yeah. thing in, re- in reverse with, with um, you know, yeah. with them going, you know, uh, Kendrick's uh, mm-hmm. you, uh, anemic 
uh, force being Drake. So this First is, is all, a, uh, this is going to be a great battle. How can they say that the control verse was overrated when none of the other people delivered something like that? And then people were saying, I, I saw one comment section. It was like, well, you know, you know, why would it matter with Drake? And Kendrick Lamar getting into it. Somebody said, uh, I think they said in the comment section, you know, all of these guys are damn near 40. Well, I mean, why are y'all still waiting around for LeBron James to get another chip at 200 years old? Yeah, you got to understand yeah. in this lifetime, <laughs> in this era, the life expectancy, the shelf life for a lot of these individuals is a lot longer now. You know, they're a lot longer. People are able to eat a little bit more so they get to play around a little more. And let's be real. Pusha T went in there to declare a victory. You know, he inserted himself. He took advantage of a moment. And, you know, he ran in and out. But the real fight that people always wanted to see was K-Dot and, uh, and Drake. You know, and so, look, I, I keep telling the glam dolls. Just like I talk, I talk about the eco lights because I wanted to be clear here. Sitting now, we're just interested in hip-hop. We're on hip-hop side. But the, the glam dolls, uh, as far as the people that support Drake, because I call them glam dolls. I mean, woo. Boy, you guys could be some of the sassiest ones in the comment section. Ah, Drake is above this. Ah, the crime's hating on Drake again. I say, well, hold on now. We're hip-hop. We We're hip-hop. Hip Drake has been sitting them shots just like everybody else has. Right. And when, right? And when he does when he does his pin game, when we like at the 8 a.m. and... Right. Uh, Charlotte and all that That's the shit we like So this we is love about hip hop this Not is about, about hip -hop. hating on nobody This is Lit. fucking hip hop But the Drake fans I will say this You guys are definitely The glam dolls <laughs> What you talking about Prince Don't you see we roll With the baddest bitch but, right. You know, I do yeah. like the 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 uh, OVO camp though, because a lot of them though they some of them was in our chat saying we speaking real uh, fire. This is the truth that well, you got two of them. You know, because when we said sexy red ain't it for this battle, you know, you had people copying off what we were saying like academics and a lot of people copying off of our commentary on that. And it just even go back into this when you talk about the UMG uh, uh, angels, we've been making fun of that whole fingernail club, nail polish club, like. You know, little baby has lost his thunder, and we'll get into that a little we'll bit later. We'll get into that. Say, let's not overwhelm them at one. Yeah. So this is what I'm saying. No, you got two sections of the Drake fans. You got the the glam girls. Those are the ones that says nobody can fuck with our guy, right? It doesn't matter, <laughs> right? That's that's them. They always they in the comment section right now. I love them, but they do make me laugh. Then you got the other ones. They're more reasonable. Like, bro, can you get sexy red up out the video? They they want to hear their boy get back into the booth. Right? Then you do have the E. lights. They call in. They're very honest. I don't know if our guy's going to make it. I said, you guys, what do you think? Well, I mean, you know, I mess with J. Cole. He's one of, he is my favorite rapper. But, you know, Prince and Sin, I just, I don't know. I, maybe he should sit this one out. Right? So, and the Kendrick, the K. Dot heads, the uh, very moody niggas. Yeah, they're very artistic, you yeah. know, like uh, old school painters. Drake and Bastiash J. Cole. And, uh, Here they go, Sin. You know. Both Picasso. Drake and J. Cole are not <laughs> hip-hop. I disagree with that. Sin, you're not hip-hop. <laughs> <laughs> but no, just, just, just to say this to, to what we're saying here, look. Drake is getting a different dose this time. Um, I know someone in OVO camp right now saying, you know, the story of Adidon was tea time. Pusha T was smart strategically. And we said he was going to come from that angle. He wasn't going to come from just bars to bars, 100% hip hop. He knows that at that time, Drake has a lot of female fans. Drake is in pop culture. He crossed over into pop. Even though a lot of these guys had crossed over to pop, but Drake is the only one who was getting singled out for it. But anyway, he crossed over into pop. Because no, don't forget, Kendrick was rapping over on a Taylor Swift a, a single. But anyway, he crossed over into pop. So when... Pusha T did the story of Adidon, he knew that would be a more uh, appeasing, uh, more controversial, more interesting uh, diss track for someone who has one foot in pop and one foot in hip hop. If he would have just did bars like, oh, I, you know, I'm Pusha T, I, I lyrically destroy you, nobody would have listened to that shit when it came to Drake. And this is why this is a good opportunity for Drake right now with, uh, uh, with what? Kendrick Lamar is offering because this is his chance to get back into the ring, possibly even throw some shots at Pusha T too, because I know he still feels salty about that loss. 
And uh, he been and, throwing shots at Pusher. Yeah, but he he didn't no. have nothing to really grip on because Pusher almost took the bait with Jim Jones, which we said we called it. We said, said it was it's bait. a trap. We said it was a trap. So yeah, and, it's, it's and, for uh, Jim Jones to you know jump Pusher T and then go cry right. on the Breakfast Club and Pusher T. Retracted once he realized that Jim Jones was a Trojan horse. It was it just was a, to get Drake he, back yeah. on the horse to yeah. really ignite that lyrical beef again. But K Dot is motivated. Uh, Prince was even telling me a couple of days ago he, you know, he felt like you know Mm-mm-mm. Drake is very angry. Future is smoking on his weed or whatever, just chilling. And there's a tornado coming with. Kendrick Lamar. That's what Prince, you know, told me where he felt a tornado is coming with uh, Kendrick Lamar. And uh, again, anybody who's unprepared in this war is going to lose, period. Anybody who's unprepared. You can have, you know, the bloggers who are either being paid or just on a uh, uh, champagne poppy dick. You're not helping Drake in that way. This is going to be a real battle. And I don't see both sides or either sides backing down lyrically. I do think Drake eventually is going to respond. I think he is. I think eventually he is going to respond. And, uh, you know. He's too angry right now. But he's too angry angry. right now to do it. Well, yeah. I mean, no, maybe he needs that anger. You know, he said, you know, he got to. Listen, I I know what people are doing. I get it. You know, it's kind of like, you know, uh, it's like some seasons of LeBron James at this age. You kind of see him like this team just messing up. And people are like, well, maybe, you know, four rings is it for James, you know? You know, and, and the, the, here's the thing about what, what's going on with Drake with hip hop. Because now people are reassessing his legacy. Some people are saying, well, you know what? Um, well, maybe he got an advantage over Meek Mill because, you know, we, we come to find out how stupid he is. You know, he, we, maybe people because Meek Mill benefited from the pedigree and the legacy of Philadelphia. You know, people just assume like maybe Meek Mill had Cassidy disc record type bar potential. I knew he was gonna lose. Right? <laughs> All them air pockets we be rapping. Yeah. But go ahead, Prince. Go, preach, I, cook, Prince, cook. I, I knew that Meek Mill didn't have anything for Drake because <laughs> listen, look, I hate to say this, but the type of girls that were constantly listening to Meek Mill's mixtapes, Dream Chasers One and Two, weren't the brightest. I'm I just know, saying uh, that. Well, some people are gonna be like, "Well, what about the 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 yaki girls that listen to Drake?" Drake had a spectrum, though. N- he n- had no, a spectrum he, of women yeah. that you know listen to him. Yeah. Right. Good. So, some of the girls that I've been around that were listening to Dream Chasers one religiously, they were arguing with me that the Earth is flat. So I I kind of <laughs> got an assessment early on, like, eh, I think some of his fan base is kind of stupid. <laughs> Cause I, I go look to the women And if the women are stupid I know damn sure The niggas ain't working With too much Cause I think The girls are kind of stupid <laughs> You heard what Michael Mech said Yeah He said In, in countries where the women yeah. Are either uh, Overly policed yes. Or they're not educated The men are not The, the civilizations Are not advanced he, He's absolutely right God bless the dead He's absolutely correct <laughs> So I, I got that early on And then so when he didn't Show up with anything I said ah, That sounded about right now, people are now going back and questioning the legitimacy of the battle. I don't delegitimize this Drake's victory over Meek Mill. I think no. Meek Mill was a, I think he was a rapper with a poor gameplay. I think he's very emotional. Listen, and it appears to be he may be a closeted male. I have nothing to do with right. that. You I mean, mean, that's the, just, the no Diddy files. Yeah, that's the no Diddy files. The, the no I mean, Diddy files. There you go. You know, uh, right. allegedly go. seemed well, as if Meek Mill with his matching outfits yeah. yes. could be a part of possibly, uh, allegedly, hypothetically, a part of the yeah. uh, uh, the matching outfit club. I don't club. know. Maybe, maybe he had a crush on Drake. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> we don't know these things yet. I don't know. We don't I'm know. Sick. But Kendrick is a problem. Like, look, I'm going to be honest, you know, out of millennial class you know my top 10 um being a millennial myself was always kendrick drake cole uh i love wale until he got too depressed and and just didn't feel it wasn't feeling himself but his albums to me are like a great fusion of r&b and hip-hop big crit i was very irritated about what took place with def jam with him and uh i you know big sean only disappointed me when it came to his production in the sense of what he provided with his albums i think he's back on a horse now and i actually love 
his uh fan base big sean fan base is like so chill even if they if you if you roasting him they'll just calmly come on and be like you know we love him we well that's because they got their mental health straight right but you know detroit yeah. people they like they just show a lot of love to him and they well, just calmly do it they like we love big sean so big sean if you listening your your city loves you <laughs> well here's the thing about it though now my guy coming out the gate you know early on was definitely big crit i thought the production was there I thought uh, what he was doing was excellent. Uh, look, early on, I'm not going to lie to you. I just, you know, I actually think J. Cole's production was a lot more diverse at one point in time. But, you know, again, he rebranded himself, so it is what it is. But I'll say this. Here's the thing about Drake. Um, I think Drake suffered severely uh, with the whole DJ drama, he has to stop centering these beefs around women because I, I tend to notice it damages him in the long run. Astrology wise, right. it, he got a yeah. Venus of Scorpio. He's stuck on that. Yeah, he can He got to. He got to move on. He's got to move on past all of this. Like even what he's doing with Rick Ross. I'm gonna be honest with you. Him inviting Rick Ross's ex to the concert and you know it's showing the tickets online and I was like, you know what, Drake, that's cool. But then when Rick Ross was riding his skinny big ass around in that Maybach playing that Kendrick verse. And that verse was a hot appetizer. Drake went right on stage and got angry. We keep telling people appetizers are not the same thing as a full disc. Like people's yeah. like hiss from Megan was whack. No, it wasn't. It was a warning shot. And I love warning shots. You know, I you go back and listen to the, the warning shots that Jay-Z had for Nas or Nas had for Jay-Z. And then finally we got... You know the the full fledged uh, uh, disc record from uh, you know basically the takeover, and then we had you know Nas come back with Ether. So these are just appetizer appetizers. It's like even when um, Drake was sending shots towards Kendrick towards 8 a.m. Uh, Charlotte. So to you know Prince Point, you know we're just interested to see where this is going to lead when it comes to actually full on verses. I don't want to hear this was stuff about to it. Like yeah. that. He yeah. was playing it over and over again, yeah, right? He should troll him. That's my thing about Drake, though. That's that's my only thing about Drake that I just find abhorrent about him. And maybe it can be a toxic Scorpio thing because sometimes the niggas, they do a lot of petty striking. And then when people return fire, some of them do cry, right? It's like Diddy. He's like, why is everybody scared of me? Nigga, are you serious? You've been cutting up. Now, I think Scorpios that kind of stood on their square, uh, the late great prodigy, you know? He's like, I'm fucking with Jay-Z. I'm fucking with Nas. That's what I feel like doing. Right? Jay-Z got him, though. Yeah. With that summer jam shit. Yeah, he, he got, got him. him. But at the end time, I, at the least, though, he owned up to it. Future said, let them birds fly. I don't like that nigga. He said, I don't like that nigga. And he says, you keep trying to make bootleg versions of my music. Drake got on stage. He's upset. He's very angry. Hey, you got to understand, hey. this is... um. And then, let, me, let, me, let me say this, too. Now, there's a, there's, a, there's a bit of other forms of hegemony that takes place here. Remember, now, this is... This is a fried chicken wing sector of black America that is trying to evict Drake out of the culture. I'll say this again. This isn't, you know, a white girl in Manhattan, upper Manhattan. This isn't Rosenberg. You know, this isn't, you know, Elliot Wilson. This is it's not one of those people. When those people diss Drake, Drake has a pretty strong, secure position of himself. He's like, I, I don't really care about y'all. Y'all don't mean nothing to me. But when you have you know, fried chicken wing, Memorial Drive niggas like Future, whose shit is still being played in the club in the streets religiously. Dope boys relate to him. He raps about being a street nigga, slanging at work in his grandma's kitchen, having street creds to some degree. Um, and for him, on the record, they're not just saying they don't like Drake. They're calling him a cornball. And they're trying to right? take, and they're trying to basically compete with you with the audience because yeah. the, a black audience has never booed Drake. He got booed by a bunch of pet, uh, white kids with money who booed him at that uh, concert or that he went to when uh, uh, Frank Ocean couldn't show up. So he had those type of people. But he's never gotten booed by a black audience or evicted by the black audience because, you know, they still know Drake is half black, you know, and people still overall had fun moments with Drake over his 15 years being in the game. But... The danger that Future does possess, as Prince stated, is uh, Future has given us a lot of moments too, and them call center girls and them, like them hot wings, yeah. you know. Them, Drake them, don't know them, nothing about them, that them, shit. Them, them hot Cheetos. He doesn't. He don't want to get booed by that crowd because if you, you if you get booed by that crowd, that means you're 
hip hop career is over, which hasn't happened to Drake yet. But that is the danger of Travis Scott with Future, with uh, Kendrick. I'm gonna be clear with, with you. Metro Boom and all them clicking up. That yeah. is the danger of being overthrown from that space. Let's keep it very simple for you all. This is the deep fried South. I'll say that again. Drake is not wrestling for position in Manhattan. He's not jockeying for position in NorCal or Soho, right? Drake is in Miami. He's in Florida. He's moving around. He does not like this because on the What the Fuck You Mean album, where he also where he was also future was getting at uh, apparently he was look like he was may have been getting that gunner uh, right before that but let me let me tell you this real quick because look at what drake is running around with right now sexy red now sexy red is barbecue she's absolutely she's barbecue she is uh korean wig store she is eyelash glue she is everything you can think of with Niggerella culture. But she doesn't sell yet. But <laughs> there's a difference. There's a difference when the cool niggas, because Sexy Red is like, it's fun, but it's not, it ain't the cool shit. Yeah. It ain't, uh, let's be real. Well, it, you know, he, yeah, he recruited Soldier yeah, Boy, yeah, and it did. Yeah. She may have a jam on her, on her hands because uh, they re recruited Soldier Boy to try to help. I know. Rework that whole situation where. But, but when you look at, <laughs> but you look at Drake, he looked too old and big over there. Mm -hmm. He looked out of place. Can we be honest? In the videos. Now, here's the thing about it. You can run around with sexy red. That's fine. But look at his classification. He's running around with sexy red. Academics can say what he want to say about little baby, and you know we've joked about the Michael Bubin parties, the white parties. But your man Drake. Was wearing fingernails. Lil Baby said, I don't wear no fucking fingernails. He responded back to Academics. He said, Stop trying that funny shit with me. But I he does. His, so, he, he has he has his nails painted. It was in that so, recent video that I muted uh, that he did that song Lil Baby did. Well, he got, he had he, him, Yachty. Lil Baby they, claims, Lil they're Baby part claims. part of that UMG fingernail club. Yeah, but that's what he's claiming. But I'm just highlighting something a little bit different here. And you write, Sin, about we're going to have that talk about the UMG Angels. But let's be real about Drake. Can we? Can we not? Can we not? Let, let's not stand on ceremony, you all. Drake has been running around here with matching fingernail polish, with Lil Yachty. He's been a city girl. He's been a bad bitch with sexy red. She's running around here. They all in the video together. Nothing that, wrong with that's it. That's true. You gotta be. Yeah. You gotta be careful. You don't want to yeah. be coined as yeah. a city girl. Now we yeah. did that because we comedians like we like to. Uh, uh, joke around and have fun So hopefully nobody take offense to it But it is what it is We're part of the culture And we love making jokes And uh, some people are going to be sensitive about it Some people are going to have a good sense of humor But to get back into it Even Meg the Stallion called him She called him out saying you had a BBL Yeah, she. I mean you have women calling you out Like you, your name is Tanashi yeah. Like your name is Tisha Like your name is Kim You got women out here saying Posted up in another, uh, another nigga hood like a bad, bad bitch, bitch. I mean, you got a, a, a bitch telling you that. You Can got a, a female rapper saying, post it up in my hood like a bad bitch. She talking to you like a female. And then uh, to add to that, to what you're saying, Prince, you know, you got to be careful with your how, your perception, where you could be painted, what corner you could be painting it to. Because on top of that, when you said with the women thing, it doesn't work on the culture no more. Before, taking another man's bitch used to be like, one of the golden goose plays in hip hop where the audience be like, Oh man, and nice oh man, so and so took your bitch early 2000s. Oh man, so and so took your bitch. Now in 2024, a lot of audience is like, Yeah, okay, you took the, the nigga bitch, in? but some Let's guys believe real. bitches ain't loyal anyway, so they're like, Hold Can on. we get to the bars? <laughs> this is what's beautiful. you right, Sin. I'm gonna give you a round of applause of that, babe. You good? Mm -hmm. You feeling good? I'm feeling good. Yeah, because we back to talking about hip hop. Listen, let me tell you something real quick. I'm going to tell you where Drake is going to lose. You will lose against Future. I know people thinking like bars and, you know, Drake. Is, yeah, Drake is a far more technical MC than goddamn Future. But Future is a player. His whole image is a player. Now, I'm not saying the nigga is really smooth like that. I don't know him. He's not my cousin. 
Well, he may be. I don't know. But what I'm saying is this. Drake has not presented an image cool enough to counter what Future has been consistent through his career. We've only seen that nigga fuck up one time, and that was Sierra. I know. Right? And you got to look from Jay-Z, because Jay-Z was Jay-Z provided the only verse so far in the history of Future's career that got him really upset. When he, when he said on 444... Uh, another nigga playing football with your son. Right. That that was a diss. I don't I don't think Jay Z meant it to be a diss, but it was a diss by accident. And future J- was meant that angry. Shit. <laughs> he meant that shit. Now, <laughs> if Drake stops trying to out cool niggas and bar up, I could tell you this right now. One of the things you could do, I mean, you know, since you're already trolling people through that women, you possibly could go at that Sierra angle a little deeper. Right? Because that's been the only thing that's kind of pulled. It's only been the only thing that kind of snatched on Future's lapel publicly. But outside of that, he's pretty much been a, a 100% player representation in, in street rap music. There's a difference. And Drake is not a street rapper. That's one of the reasons why Drake is looking goofy right now. He's out of his element. Now, you may be associated or an affiliate or a consigliere of mob ties and you can only claim that shit so far what not what took place with takeoff so you got to be kind of careful with that he don't feel that way right? though so, with, the, with the mob ties thing he feel like takeoff situation was an accident or a bad situation and mm-hmm. that don't have nothing to do with me i wasn't there that night so so he feel like i'm gonna still rep my no my he's set. not saying that he can't rep it i'm just saying from what what we saw on her loss because like what you said <laughs> i think it's sometimes could be looked at as bad optics too but her loss is so on here you know, for my dogs, he don't mind. He just well, still if he's going to do that, though, we have seen over and over that that's not. We don't feel that we don't believe Drake. Is what I'm saying. We just don't believe Drake. No matter how many times he throws up the bees, put flags over his eyes, nobody believes Drake. Nobody believes him. Nobody believes that. So that part of the game, you're going to have to let that go, Aubrey. Because I'm going to tell you why you really angry. Because there's another nigga on the left coast now that that culture is intertwined with all that pro-black conscious, crip, blood, everything else that people really feel with Kendrick Lamar. And he's been publicly co-signed by gang members, gang rappers, legendary gangster MCs. So if you're talking about someone that's coming off the offshoot of gangster music, that's why I said this is going to have to be strictly bars. Well, this is going to have to be strictly bars for Drake on this behalf because the reason why I was bringing this up concerning the future situation. For the past couple of years, Drake has been running around with Yachty. He's been... He's you part know, of the Angels, UMG Angels. The UMG Angels. He's been running around with Aiden Ross, who's been sniffing men's butts out of their seat. Academics, who's been pushing little girls around, telling them I'm the prize. <laughs> Then he's wearing matching, he has matching nail fingernail sets with Yachty. Drake has not appeared cool in hip hop. Now what he has been able to do is just harmonize, right? But the whole notion of the reason why there's a there's a rejecting element here because Drake has kind of put himself in a weird dork sector right now. And recently, look. Yes, and do, this is just of recent. People do like the mob ties, some aspects of the mob ties. Look, people actually do like the uh, mafia stuff from Drake. Mm. I remember when you did a video a long time ago when you talked about how people were afraid of Drake at that time when before he took the laws from Pusha T. When he was doing the mafioso spaghettio mix with, when he was like talking about his Italian, and uh, uh, black mafia, Italian mafia fusion. A lot of people were fucking with that. That is actually where he looked the coolest while he was still serenading to the ladies. You talk about like the hot wing shit, the sexy red shit doesn't match his look. And I agree with that. Like the the, the sexy red look doesn't match. It, it just doesn't match. It just doesn't it doesn't look good on him. Uh, and I'll, I'll say this too. And, 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 I, and I, I mean this in the most disrespectful way. We've seen you chastise Meg the Stallion publicly. And I get it. Carl Crawford, you know, the J Prince and the J Prince Senior and probably the grandfather. I don't know. Let's be real. Y'all. It's chat. Is Meg the Stallion? Is, it, is that an ugly woman? No, that's why Future was trying to troll yeah. saying yeah. fucking Meg the Stallion yeah. is by the group yeah. trying to yeah. with that type shit right. uh, a track, which is a now, fire track, by the way. Here's how I operate. 
if, if I feel you trolling the shit out of Meg The Stallion and you, you, you're trying to make her look corny, and look, there's, there's a possibility you can do that. Your woman you're running with better look twice as better. You don't be in Meg The Stallion's face like, ah, you know, she's a chump. This bitch is ugly. And then you roll out there with Frankenstein face, sexy red. <laughs> I do agree with Prince okay. with that. I mean, Megan, whether you don't like her or not, whether you think she shot Tori or not, she she has a a, a bacon package. She got a a beautiful face and a very nice body. Because the way Drake was out here trying to play Megan, he was trying to play it like she's a, you know she's a chump bitch. She ugly. Her breath stank. Even without makeup, she cute and her body don't look butchered right. up by by surgery. But this man then rolled out here with a woman. He been rolling around here with a woman that looked like Sloppy Joe in the face. She do look like a herpy. Okay. Like, let's keep it a, a hundred. Sexy this, red look like a herpy. You, this is what makes Drake look uncool. And I'm going to tell you, if if I'm fucking with the whole rap attire, like what 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 nigga am I I'm looking to represent? All the future's women are pretty. All of the niggas around him are shining. The cars are dope. It do look like you're going to a player's ball when you see that nigga's videos. I agree with you. His baby <laughs> mamas still look good. And even the ones who are famous, his baby mamas are still very attractive. Right. Even Sierra, mm -hmm. she looks good. You know, so I will I will say with that, I will say that so far, seemingly, it seems as if Future has never fucked an ugly bitch before. Yeah, That's what it is. So he and again, we Prince and I are not superficial people. We're going into the mindset of a superficial culture, right? Right. If you're talking about the players club and who look like this and that, future fits into that to into that. You know, he's never had an ugly uh chick on his arm. Seemingly, seemingly, I'm just saying. This is where you know? we, we we're breaking this down, and I'm gonna tell you this is why uh, listen, I'm telling you why everybody's handling Drake the way they're handling him. You know, because see, you're supposed to be, first of all, you, you, you're really representing Houston because of, again, to the, Houston is a player city. It is a player city. I mean, you know, the, the late great Chad Butler and you got Zero, you got Devin the Dude. Uh, you have a lot of legends out there. But when I look at somebody like Drake, and if you, if you want to talk about just, like Sin said, superficial culture. I'm going to be honest with you all. I, I would not want to be a part of Drake's club. And I'm going to tell you why. Right, right, right. And also, it, someone it, it, just came out there. Prince just said that. Uh, Simpson said that's Drake's. Uh, Sexy Red is just his artist. Yeah, that's still a problem, though. But go ahead, Prince. Are you, you're about to break it down. Listen, that is his fault. Okay. Sexy Red looks like one of the women that sit on Fresh and Fit. Drake is supposed to somehow magically rap to me that the shit he working with is fly. And we got to keep it real. You can say what you want to say about Future and the whole Sierra shit. And, you know, the nigga was out here singing. Oh, 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 oh. oh yeah. Yeah. And, and Future even made a record where he said at the end of the day, he felt like a clown. After so many years later, he finally did a video. He said, I fucked up. I fucked up. Sierra, Sierra was the one for him. Right? He did. He had an honest moment, and yeah. we know all players have one moment. <laughs> he was a, uh, he was honest Damn, about. That's the one that got away. He was honest about that yeah. moment. And uh, look, look, Drake has so much money and stuff. He could have got a good looking woman. Look, it's like what we said. Why do you think Bad and Bougie blew up so quickly? Where it's like over a billion views. Music. I mean, with the music video, all three of them black women from. Light skin, caramel to dark skin chocolate. All three flavors of chocolate look look amazing. Amazing. You know, and we gotta be honest. You know, you walking around here with sexy red who it's it's like you're trying to force us to think she's attractive. Dude, and yeah. look, I'm just not I'm Nigga, not feeling it. I'm gonna tell you something. Look too dirty. Like I said, if you if you up here arguing with Meg the Stallion and you trying to make you trying to make Meg the Stallion look like Swamp Thing to us, <laughs> every black person in America can see. We got eyes, ladies we, and we gentlemen. Got, we got two eyes. Motherfuckers baby. got eyes. We can see. What are we looking at? 
What are we doing here, Drake? I hope this don't get us in trouble. It ain't getting us in trouble. No, no, not with. They're going to be like those, those super preachy uh, hypocrites who support um, people having sex with kids. They're going to be like, why are you comparing two black women uh, dog crimes? Why are you comparing me to the white man? <laughs> Shut your ass up. They, them the same them first ones always tell you well you know unlike white men black men this that i don't want to hear that either but i'm we're talking about from a, a culture perspective right and i'll give drake you know, scissor so, scissor is a uh a, a, a bohemian good looking black woman who has a strong pin game and who is quietly a big deal a quiet big star because you know her album keeps selling she keeps doing good and that's great but you're not showing Scissor as much as you're showing uh sexy red though. Scissor so. is from TDE camp. That's a no-fly zone for me. It's a no-go. I don't care that they smashed or not. I don't care. What I am saying, if Drake is looking to get back into a competitive market, this will be the most honest commentary Drake will ever hear through the culture. I promise you that. Drake, you look like a cornball to us right now. Now, listen, if you made your money, let's move on. Then I shouldn't hear that you're angry screaming on stage. I but, think he's going to respond because of how Chubb said, because of our reporting and, uh, you know, people mimicking us. I think Chubb wants Kendrick to have the full first go. They want mm -hmm. they want the, the verse, the diss uh, songs to drop first. So then Drake can respond. But Drake but, can't so, say, uh, but, oh, go ahead. No, what are you about but, to say? Uh, but Kendrick Camp is saying, I, nah, because you, you know, well, like that, it, it, you, you responded to Infrared, you responded to the Twitter uh, feed of Meek Mill. Some people are pressuring him to still respond. Okay. So, that's true. I'm just saying where Drake is getting tight with nigga, with chicken fried niggas like Future. You're not winning there. The only thing you can do, like you normally do, is throw up that maybe he didn't do right with the whole Sierra thing. Fine. Move on. But I'm telling you right now, you're not going to be able to outfly these niggas that you have pretended to do. And B, I keep saying the music that Drake has been making the last couple of albums, with the exception of the dance album, has been T-Move future music. Even the idea, let me give you another example. When that whole thing with Mariah the Scientist uh, where Young Thug was talking on the phone uh, from prison with Mariah the Scientist, from jail f with Mariah the Scientist. Uh, Drake is all out here. Yo, Drake is really upset that, you know, Young Thug's call had been leaked and this, that, and the thing. That nigga, shut up. Duh. Listen, we understand overcompensation, but let's move on. All Future did on this album, he had a song, a bonus track called My Twin. Now, I didn't hear Drake come out and say, because Mariah, the scientist, recently just got her ass jumped. She was being slung across that floor. You didn't hear Drake out here saying, yo, why are they doing this to young thugs, women, this, that, and the thug? These are all situations for clout. So what I'm saying here concerning Drake, just as in, for MCs, you're not going to be able to convince the Rick Ross niggas, the future niggas, um, even some of the niggas in your own camp, some of them boys are just there for listen. Listen to what Twenty One Savage, 007 UK Black Ass said. Man, I only with Drake. Cause I know it gonna bring us some real money, right? They see you as a lick. Some people, some right. people see you as a lick. So the reason why we're saying this, he can like as many comments as he want concerning Kendrick Lamar. The only way that all this shit is gonna be changed around is if you get in there and you bar up with that nigga. It's nothing else. I love the, the bad bitches in the Drake camp. They say the men and women, he don't need to respond to no one. They hating on him. Cool. But Drake also hate on other people too. All of his bars, you got to think about it. Ain't nobody innocent. Everybody has Everybody got hate on somebody innocent before whether they were a man or woman enough to apologize or not. Since, let me see, what was the album saying that came after Scorpion? Oh, what came after Scorpion uh, was uh, uh, the what the the, um, the Darko Lane mixtape and stuff. But okay, but the another official album was uh, yeah the one with the hearts. Oh, Certified Lover Boy. Certified Lover Boy. Okay, yeah. from that album, from that album on, he's been taking shots at Kendrick Lamar. So even when his father came out, 
Well, you know, my son, every time somebody rolling out with a campaign, they use my son. I said, and your son has been smoking on an X-Pack. That's somebody's son. Let's let's not do the moral shit. Let's just keep it what it is. It, it's, a, it's a competitive sport. Let's be real. I'm just saying one of the reasons why Drake looks weird to people right now. Look, I have no problem. This is the time of his career where Drake wants to get his mace preacherhood on at this side of his career where it looks bizarre to the public but he's truly happy then so be it but from what we see on this stage him screaming and cursing and yelling it into the mic he said and i could go anywhere i want to go i can't nobody fuck with me i said well drake it sounds like you got something to get off your chest yeah but he can't also like we said in the other <laughs> stream though the live show he can't respond just immediately while being mentally split that's how they got him before he was on the album working on the album and he immediately snapped back with Duppy. It wasn't a bad disc record. It was actually very lyrical. And uh, they got him. If he on tour, he got to wrap this tour shit and other stuff up before he get ready to... That's why he really angry. <laughs> That's, That's why, why I'm telling yeah. you, Drake really Let's, wants to wait, get in what there. What you going to do? Just say some shit and be unprepared? Well, you know what? See... But I, he has to respond, though. But, like, get off tour first. Let him get off tour first. Well, listen... Even when he's uploading them GTA photos on Instagram, they rather they rather battle me than than battle themselves. They can't see they're their own worst enemy. I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't know who the fuck you're talking about, Drake. You know, is some Illuminati behind the scenes? They trying to touch your butthole, your cookie hole. What's going on? Like, I don't know what you're talking about, Drake. Right. Also, also, Danny B said that uh, I don't think Sexy Red uh, will is ugly she looks like the common black woman the common black woman do not have that many tattoos on her face i you could danny b i know danny, you fuck you, with you can, i know you fuck with sexy you red you can rock with her but come on sexy red Stop come it. on danny b that's like saying 21 savage looks like the average nigga first of all dog <laughs> crimes believe the average black woman is very beautiful and attractive but to say that sexy red looked like the average black woman with all them tats and shit on her face and all that. Let's let's not let not let's not play games. Look, and again, I'm making it clear. I want you to understand. I'm just calling it for what it is. I'm not here to drag sexy red at all. You gonna say we still dragged her though? No, but I'm gonna be honest with you concerning <laughs> the culture. I'm telling you how cultures like, like one of the reasons. Why, remember how how many times they called Jay Z ugly in the face? They called him a he's a, a big lip porch monkey nigga. They say he can't get no waves in his. They called Jay Z all types of. But it was mostly coming from the man. Ugly, but yeah. still, nonetheless, though, that, there's some women I remember hearing calling Jay Z ugly that too. That was the minority, though. I, Stop listen, I'm telling you where I was around. I'm gonna be honest with you, Sid. Let me finish. My, Jim Jones, Sin, Cameron. Sin. Let me say what I need to say here. So there was a time where people were like, and then, and then they accentuated when he got with Beyonce. So look, that's what the, that's what they do. But I'm saying this is how Drake. He, this is how he advertises himself. You know, remember now, one of the reasons why he don't know how to deal with this whole future shit, because he can't, what can he really play? He can't invite Sierra to a fucking concert. She ain't going to do it. Everybody know that. And she's with a nigga that makes more money than both of these niggas. Well, some people say Drake is quietly a billionaire or almost there. He supports Israel. <laughs> I'm getting Israel money. I'm done, 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 sing, done, done. <laughs> I'm just being honest. This is what Drake does. Now, listen, Danny B, I'm only using the same measurement Drake has used on other men. And so you a... can't, Danny B, you can't. I, Danny B is a long time supporter, but I'm being honest with you. You know I'm keeping it real. Yeah, yeah. Drake, I am using the same rule of measurement he's played other men in rap music by. But look. look. Everyone knows that Sexy Red looked like her weave stain. Like, for all of us to sit up here and to say, like, like, I mean, of course, everybody can have their own personal opinions, but I'm just saying, you know, and we said, look, I said Meek Mill ugly, and he got a fucked up uh, hairline, right? So, you know, and he all here matching suits with, with, uh, with no Diddy and all this other shit. So, look, let, just keeping it on the subject, if you're in a superficial culture and future is supposed to be this casanova and he talk about dropping mega style yes yeah, by the by the group type shit we're just saying that sexy red is not going to be able to compete with that that's all i'm saying that's all we're yeah. saying i'm just keeping it real like y'all know damn well and some of the women i get it you know there's been a lot of toxic niggas in hip-hop so y'all like we should be able to enjoy our toxicity absolutely 
But let me tell you something. What black men will say. I'm going to tell you what a black man will say. If a black man that's a hardworking ass nigga come around the corner and he find out his woman rolled out of the bed with something that looked like 21 Savage in the face, he's going to be fucking pissed. <laughs> you fucking shitting me. This fucking scratchy billboard face nigga, this graffiti face, dirty face nigga, you really going to cheat on me with this dirty face nigga? And I'm actually, right? I will say though that. So if the women, the women would do the same thing if they came home from work and they man, and they a hard worker, and they man slid out of the bed with someone that looked like Sexy Red, they would say the same shit and they would be gossiping to their women. Now I will say that uh, Drake was being a pimp by having uh, Sexy Red sleep with Aiden Ross. He definitely did not get none of the, the beautiful queens from our community. <laughs> How about this? So, uh, uh, good on you, uh, black black women. They, he gave, he gave, he definitely gave Aiden Ross a, a a lower, lower, lower cheap vehicle. Let's just put it that way. So that's all I'm saying. Y'all can't, y'all can't miss me with that one. I swear to God. Somebody, <laughs> hey, listen. I tell you, the girls, if they nigga rolled out the bedroom with someone like Sexy Red, they would be fucking pissed. Yeah, I do agree. They would be fucking pissed. I do agree, Prince. I agree. And also, I it does feel like uh, Sexy Red is getting pimped by uh, Drake because she don't like Aiden Ross. Well, how do we know? But then she had the, well, allegedly. And we I, don't I, I said The only reason why I said, how do we know? Because we heard about all of this shit going on in the industry. I don't know what's going on. Well, she legal. And okay. she, open, she open with it. There hasn't been no allegation, at least yet, of any, any no ditty uh, stuff going on. But... I'll just say, look, based off this battle, man, just gotta be better, you know. You know, Kendrick had like no name in in his uh, music video. I'm just saying, like, dark skin, brown skin, light skin, just get like good looking black women out there. Look, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm just keeping a G with y'all, and y'all should, you should, you should, you should be happy about this, folks. It's about class. Look, I'm just being honest with the women that that nigga future be having in the video. It, everything just feels classier. Yeah, like even you that recent that, video with yeah. uh, the weekend in him. I'm not saying black women perfect. were all dark skin, all beautiful, all tense. Look what Drake saying. Drake didn't run around here. He talking about Rihanna ugly. He calling Meg out of the name, and I'm like, boy, do you need glasses? Yeah, bro. Like what even are we when he was talking about, about you had better than Rihanna. I know it ain't Who? sexy red. <laughs> It ain't sexy rap, you know. That's that what ain't going. That ain't going to work. If you go to oh, say, like, like what we you got about better him. than Rihanna. Show us. This is what I'm saying about why Drake don't look cool right now. Bro, like I mean, how would y'all feel if I showed up with you know running with Aiden Ross and academics, hard on bitches, academics. In the chat, how would y'all feel about Prince Solomon? Well, academics is not well, uh, easy think on the eyes it. either. But think, but that's what my point is. So I don't know why. Like, uh, if y'all saw me <laughs> running with a, a a boy like Aiden Ross, and y'all saw him on camera sniffing Andrew Tate's ass print when he got out the chair, yeah, would y'all still think, oh man, we think Prince is cool nigga. He, we think he actually a cool nigga. They were like, nah, them niggas lame. Them niggas lame. That's what I'm saying, but the only way Drake to get up out of this shit is to simply bar up. That's it. Yeah, all everybody else, they, you know, they they do uh, image consultant wise, again, you know, is just looking better over on that side. It's he, not impossible for you to get what you need to get. Uh, but you know, it's different. Like, nobody could come to us with all that superficial shit because we already say we are of the heart chakra, we are for the culture. And you know, we never said that we were about uh, money, sex, hoes, and all that shit. That's not what Dark Crimes is about. So people don't take offense to what we're saying on this particular platform. We're talking about a superficial culture <laughs> mixed like, with like, a lyrical uh, battle war. Like, and if Drake wanna try to be able to look like a real contender on both the superficial side and on the lyrical side, we're just saying that, you well, know, that matters to him sexy because, red yeah, ain't going to work. Nothing he's doing is going to work. Everybody he running with, look at the, the, the Yachty. I'm a, Yachty sound like he got two tongues in his mouth when he talk. <laughs> they my heart off my thigh when they think that I'm a fly. When I read the poetry, they know it's me. Come on, y'all. There's nothing cool about any of this shit. 
That's why Metro Boomin sampled Prodigy all over the album when he said, yo, these niggas are lame. This is not cool. You pretending to be everyone else. I actually agree and with I, you. I, I, look. But Yachty does have a place when it comes to interviews. That's mm. where he shines at. I think, I to your point, if you're talking about this uh, campaign and you have more Yachty's, you know, who doing their thing with interviews and stuff, but on the music and Yachty can't really pull no weight. Look, I'm, like, a, I'm look just like, saying this. Like the, the future and Kendrick and them, they definitely will just wipe the floor with him. Look, this is I'm being honest with you all. And he he you know he'll lash out at Black American culture with his slick bars, you know, whips like American slaves. It's all right, nigga, whatever. But dog, I would keep it real with you, man. That motherfucking culture you dissing. Is the same way as why you feel in this type of way. Everything you're doing is lame. Everything Drake is doing right now is lame. The only thing he can do in this situation is just simply borrow. And I'm gonna tell you this, Drake. If, if that bicyclist, that Bohemian bicyclist, J. Cole, if that motherfucker delivers a stellar diss track, which he is capable of. Nigga, that is going to suck so much of air out of the room for you. It's going to suck so much of air out of the room for him. I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm just keeping it blunt. And that could create a funny dynamic there. Because it, for the first time, people will see J. Cole showing some teeth. But it's not even that. It's about the type of food he may bite into. Kendrick Lamar is seen as a prize fighter lyrically. Now, you can argue, you know, does uh, I think Drake is the most battle tested. But for what we've seen with Drake and that push of T thing, and a lot of again, a lot of the bad bitches in Drake's fan base, they say he don't have to respond to him. I said we're the only ones who said that. Just to remind people, we were the only people who said Drake was the most battle tested, and everybody copied. No one. We said that years ago. No one else was saying that until we said it. But go ahead, Prince. Just to remind people. We, know, we were the ones who said Drake was the most battle tested and we brought up the people he went up against. Yeah, you know. Uh, just like, you know, his big brother, Joe Budden, is one of the more battle tested MCs when you look at his battle work. But I'm going to be honest with you. If, if, if J. Cole, if the Bohemian Bicyclist, if he really gets off a shot, let's say the nigga delivers... A seven minute dangerous sage freestyle. Hell, J. Cole is so long with it, that nigga may even put 10 minutes at the end of the album. Yeah, but just right? to add to what you were saying though, Drake's own media people are, are um, mm-hmm. shooting up his own teammates. Academics don't like Lil Baby. He's shooting up Lil Baby with the, the UMG fingernail club. You know, so you, like your, your own media hub, Drake is shooting up your own niggas. You know? Drake. And academics is too afraid to say anything about Future because he know that album was dope with Future and 21 Cent. I mean, uh, Future and Metro Boomin. Look, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I did listen to her loss. Um, I listened to CLB. We even listened to the Dance Hall album. Uh, what other movie album he had? Didn't he have another one? He had CLB. He had... Honestly, and never then, mind. Never mind. CLB... And what was the other way? We did. I listened to her, her loss. Her loss. I, and I feel, I felt uh, Infinity Link with Quavo was better than her loss. Quavo and take off. I think it was. I think it was his best offer he had out of that lineup from CLB. I think her loss wasn't bad. It was pretty yeah. good. But the problem was, to your, it was too much dissing women, like women who aren't MCs. You know, if you want to go, hey, I guess the, maybe that's for me. Yeah, I felt it was corny. Yeah, you, I like player shit. Like, right. so I felt Infinity Link was player shit. Right. Like, and this is just personal taste. Like, Prince just don't really like guys just going at the women unless they're MCs. And you're like, y'all going back and forth. That's one thing, you know. If Drake won't go after Megan and then she goes with a full diss or something like that, right, you know, because we come from the origin of hip hop with Roxanne was uh, dusting a lot of guys. She went up against right. KRS One and. A lot of people was uh, scared of Roxanne. And a lot of people say that Roxanne is the one who really made the battle scene. So yeah, she did. You going after another chick because she a female rapper? Good, you know. But when you talk about Rihanna and all the other shit, the Serena Williams and I yeah, can't. I mean, Serena Williams' hey, husband. Who cares about that? And, and can I say this? I'll, I'll say this, Sam. 
I think And you're losing the women when you do that, but go ahead. I, I think there's a space for embittered emotional men when it comes to women. I really do. I just wish a lot of the fellas would just claim that's what it is. You know, stop acting like, you know, the quote unquote bitches don't get to you. They don't, you know, it's it's you know, hard on thoughts, but like this is an embittered emotional ex lover album, her loss. The album's called Her Loss. Who lost? Right, and then right. I, to add to your point, Carmen said, "Did you know Drake asked Meg out, and she rejected him? He's been salty ever since. He wrote no guidance about Meg. Uh, look it up and read the lyrics. She stayed clowning him. So, and then yeah. uh, we we I must say it seems like what you say have some validness to it because yeah. why did uh, Future do uh, type shit when he was talking knocking Meg, Meg and stuff about the group, the group type, type shit. shit? So that means it's something that." Future is trolling Drake about with that Megan Thee Stallion shit because he like he like I fucked Megan Thee Stallion and you know it was fun I ain't hating on her I'm a player moving on type shit and that that seemed like to be a diss towards Drake like you be like holding on to women that are just y'all having one night stands or it's just gonna be a moment and Future's trying to say it ain't even your wife or someone you was going to marry. And I think that's him also trying to protect himself from the Sierra. If the, uh, a Sierra diss, if someone used Sierra, he already made it known that was someone who's going to be my wife. That's why I got emotional well, about that. Well, Future reminds you Not of everyone's uncle that... Women I'm playing, like yeah. we just playing around. Yeah, they remind you of the uncle they'll tell you all the time where in 1993 is that one girl they were going to marry and they fucked up. I should have fucked her sister. Damn. Right? But um, that that could make sense. I, listen again, I, I feel you know. I, look, I think heartbreak music, embittered ex lover music. I mean, we we wouldn't. Where would the world be without Keisha Cole? But you right? don't like that song. Fuck you, you hoe. I don't want you back. Remember, remember we was on our Patreon oh, stream. Yeah, the we Drake's, was out, yeah, we, Drake's uh, the, the he he yeah the prototype Drake. Right, he was like, oh yeah, no, I, I told it. you. I tried. Listen, I love you. How does the hook go, babe? Fuck you, stupid hoe. He said, "I I won't take you back." I no. don't love you so. <laughs> I'd never seen what that guy looked like until we played the video. Right. And then it, he's throwing the pizza in front of the woman. And but then, but there's a lane for that because yeah. there's some guys who do like that though. And Although listen, I did think Big Sean did it well when he did uh uh um you stupid and talk about you. Yeah, that was a. I think that with E40. F- well, yeah. yeah, I don't fuck with. Yeah, yeah, I did like that one. Big Sean situation sounded like he was clapping back at a double timing ass woman. You know, on that record, sometimes with the one you mentioned, I don't want you back, or sometimes with Drake, do it's like they go on those tirades after the woman breaks up with them. And I'm gonna be honest, no, I don't like that style of rap it's not my thing it, it, it feels all weird and, and mushy and queasy but i could you, you say know, like it, like you you dissing on rihanna but you the one who she didn't even know you had a kid behind her back right, and stuff yeah, like that alleged yeah. seemingly so i don't really like to go into people's relationships or who is wrong who is right but i think some people get the perception like drake why are you getting on ladies where you know you at least did 50 percent a fuck up you know get what i'm saying it ain't yeah. like it ain't like you talking about like a two-time and bitch yeah or, that's all i'm or saying something's missing to the story it, it, listen the, the 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 her loss and uh the, the, for all the dogs and he say emo rap <laughs> it's just too much and it's i heard i saw the niggas in the comment section they said Finally, some music I can go make some money to when Future dropped this shit. Yeah, <laughs> no, it was. I mean, look, it was. Look, it's a good album. Metro Boomin and and uh, Future did the th- damn thing with like, with uh, with that album. I'm not gonna lie, it definitely is a good album. It's, it's just something it's you can sometime, just ride to, something yeah. you can work to, sometimes you can exercise to. Yeah, it's kind of weird to me because okay, all right, can can I say this real quick? Say yeah, yeah, go ahead. Drake, okay. This is why I said it's important for Drake to to become commander of his words again. I just don't feel he has that, been that. Uh, people's like, oh, well, he's almost 40. What's the point? Well, I mean, he's running around with barrettes in his hair. He's running around with sexy red at almost 40. You know, he's, he's running around still talking about smoking on his ops at almost 40. I don't want to hear that shit either. 
you know, it's still a competitive league. LeBron James is still competing, right? Vince Carter, look how, I mean, what he was over 40 when he retired. Drake has not retired as supposedly the apex predator of the rap kingdom, as they narrate him. Again, as the draconians, right, as they narrate him. This is another thing about Drake. That I'm going to stop this music here. And again, uh, I saw some people in the chat. We do appreciate you all so much. And uh, you can guys get over to our Patreon where we have further in-depth conversations about hip-hop and esoteric and psychology and everything else in politics. But I'm just going to be honest with you all about Drake. Even even his violent bars just don't hit the same to me. So I like sound tired. When, when Future said, I'm just using him as, a, I pray they knock you out your shoes type shit. And that nigga did a crucifix, Hail Mary crucifix in the video. It, it, it made me think like, man, maybe he, that nigga is knocking other trappers out of their shoes on the block. You get what I'm saying? Right. Um, Dirk is in some other shit. So when I hear him talk about the, the ops, let's even talk about Drake's alleged biggest op, right? That he keeps smoking on. The, the quote unquote body they keep assigning to Drake. We don't know if it's true or not. We can't tell because we saw him. All type of rumors are coming out about Diddy. But even this whole notion about, you know, smoking on an X pack, you know. Um, Extentacion was uh, a Chester Bennington emo rapper. He was a Linkin Park baby. A Linkin Park troll. That's the pack you're smoking on. Like, it's not even like uh, some Jimmy. Like, when 50 Cent said, uh, that nigga got hit like I got hit, but he ain't fucking breathing. Right. Or we, even even no Diddy, you yeah. know, with, uh, with you took the, you know, like the greatest rapper of all time in hip hop. You know, you you know, uh, Whitlock don't know what he talk about. Yeah, yeah. he was an actor stuff, but right. he popped two cops that was beating on a black man. You can never now. say that Pac right. was a punk. You know, whether you felt some of his moves were wrong or, or, or right. not. You know, you talk about Extentacion, which he was an emo emo rapper, Linkin Park he was rapper. An evanescent nigga. <laughs> like, I don't know what this means if that boy was alive, 45, 55. And I, I, Sin always laughs at me because I keep going back to that because it's like, what does this mean, though? Is this, is, are you, so that means any goth nigga should be on alert? Should any YouTube <laughs> nigga be scared? Like, you know, I mean, any any nigga that wears black fingernail polish is going to an anime con, should they be scared? You I know, know I do uh, think when people talk about people's mothers, sometimes, you know. I get it. Some people, because, look, I think that's going to get academics in trouble. Talk mm -hmm. about uh, well, we, we'll, we'll uh, Metro Booming Mom. Yeah, we'll so, leave that alone. You know? We'll leave it alone. But <laughs> people keep people care about their mamas now. They do care about them now, whether, whether, especially whether, if they're dead. Whether emo, emo, uh, uh, you know, punk rock, hip hop, uh, but people care about their mothers. Even when uh, Twenty One Savage was sitting in front of academics, this is how the touch was. Yeah, you know, a lot of street niggas think Future bigger than Drake. He said that's cap. I said, what do you know about that? It's like when uh, Young Jeezy and Gucci Man came out. And I was in Atlanta growing up. Hey, you you couldn't tell the, the the old corner boys or the young you couldn't tell nobody that Jeezy and Gucci Mane that they weren't the niggas of the century to them. So that's all I'm saying. Like some of this, like if we want to use the aesthetics of what's been going on with Drake, Drake is very angry right now. Even when he got on stage, he says, you know, to move it forward to the future, we have to acknowledge the mistakes of our past. I, say, I see the word play there. You're playing with the boy's name, right? Right. I said, but I want to hear it in the booth. And that's why you got to yeah. hear about how people see you. You got yeah. a Leo uh, rising. You got to listen to some of the criticism, whether you think you hate the people who criticize you or not. But yeah. when you listen to even Sean C, when he talked about you, a lot of people looked at you as like an emperor who was supposed to be comfortable with your emotions and the feminine side, but also can give you them heavy bars and, and wasn't going to allow anybody to peer pressure you to be or mold uh, you to be what they wanted you to be. They thought you was going to be more of a trailblazer. And there was moments where you gave people that. Where they're like, oh, okay. Like, when you said fuck Diddy and you was going to just do zero to 100. And, and you like, I got my mob ties by, by, behind me. So ain't nobody just going to be able to uh, blow up my car or beat me up. I got my mob ties now. I would go zero to 100, nigga, real quick. This is my fucking beat. Like, those are moments in time in hip-hop where people's like, that is the Drake we fuck with. Then he go around, mm -hmm. 
and do a R and B rap song or R and B like a rap pop song. Even though people made fun of you, like with the Hotline Bling, mm-hmm. they still like that shit. You know. Well, it's because Drake also showed us Meek Mill. You know, and at the time we got to talk about the perspective, the perception of Meek Mill. The perception of Meek Mill is that people did think he was official uh, because we saw him on the corner with the dirty braids. He was over there with Grand Hustle for a moment. People heard about allegedly his dad in the streets. So he came with a, a certain je ne sais quoi, something Philadelphia esque, street esque, right? And then when that nigga Drake said, you get embodied by a singing nigga. He was like, yes, claim your identity. I'm not the type of nigga that will type to niggas. Whoa, you couldn't say nothing about that nigga. That's what we want. Nobody don't want another Diddy. Cause you uh, mm. Also, you got to be careful because there's people in our chat saying you trying to become the new Diddy. That is not a position you want. You don't want to be a UMG stooge. You don't want to be into uh no alleged sex trafficking and none of that you gotta leave all that shit alone nothing worse than ruining uh your own legacy with uh with that type of shit so you when know when drake went after you right son when so drake, hopefully that's not true when drake responded back to common drake this is a nigga that took common out of his element Common was in the favelas of Brazil spitting and slobbing over himself. He was fighting over that Serena pussy. He said, you put that pussy. I said, he fighting over that ass. <laughs> I did a video about it. I said, oh, they fighting over that big black ass. You know Serena Williams be strapping niggas down. Yeah, he, I said, they be fighting <laughs> over that big black ass. <laughs> and, they, she they, got, the people, and she got the people, power with, the, with the, her the, hips and shit, too. The people, <laughs> yeah, the people, when she backing that ass up on them two light-skinned niggas, allegedly. <laughs> listen, allegedly. No, she but, was yeah. dating them. Right, but she, listen, you know, this is all I'm saying. She was ass up on them. <laughs> people, listen, I had niggas. This is how out of touch some of the Draconians are. Now, some of them have grown up. But I said, oh, no, this is about it. Because some of the old school hip hop niggas like, nah, Prince, it's just, you know, common smacking the young nigga around. I said, because the young nigga may be slapping that ass around. I said, you a lie. I said, that big black muscle ass. And that she's two, an athlete. I said, them two light skinned niggas, she, speaking as a light skinned nigga myself, but them two light skinned niggas are fighting over that black ass. Stamina, strength. Come on now. So. <laughs> I said this is over this is over ass. <laughs> this is over African, Wakanda, Zamunda, Ghana, Nigerian, athletic black ass. You know what the nigga said to me? No, Prince. And then what the comment say years later? It was it, it, it was, was over. He it comment was over. said I, I yeah. went out to Drake because no of Serena. Serena Williams. I thought so. And yeah. Common was the biggest simp for Serena Williams because yeah. even when it was over. He was still doing interviews. I said, "What?" Please put that. Come and move on and find and yeah. find your queen. He think you he, know? he did. It's her. <laughs> no, Jesus. you know what he said. We can share. <laughs> no, no. You had to move on, man. Get out of here. <laughs> Them niggas was sky when Common was. I. That's why Drake I, said it's funny when the gods start acting like I the bro. broads. I ain't never seen Common in my life. Go look at the sweet video. That man was spitting on himself in the video. That's that, like Emery said, that Amazonian. That's that uh, Wonder Woman. Mm, I said, no, nigga, this is deeper than hip hop. This is over black ass. <laughs> this is over big black ass. Okay. And Drake also always listened to advice with dudes who quietly hate on him. Yeah. Like when Chris Brown said, we could. I would have never shook that crack When Chris hand. Brown said, we could be friends if you don't go back to Rihanna. Nigga, what? I would have been like Apocalypse. I lied. <laughs> like, no. You see, ASAP Rocky didn't give a fuck about that shit. Like, I don't care say, what can niggas you say. Please tell them who, who do I can be. Well, I'm, I'm, can you, I'm going in. Can you please tell them what have I always said about ASAP since we first met? What was my theory you about? You're a sneaky Harlem nigga. I said that nigga don't want to rap. He's waiting to cash out somewhere. He I kept saying, how many years? I've been saying that for a long time, right? Yeah. I said, and when they said he got Rihanna pregnant, I went like this. God damn it, I knew it. I knew that nigga was waiting to cash out somewhere. And more tune for your head top. So watch I how you speak it. on my name, you know? I knew it, that sneaky Harlem Libra nigga with them painted fingernails. Oh, and to your point, like, yes. there's some dudes who do painted nails and some people give them a pass. ASAP Rocky because he's a fashionista nigga. Right. Playboy Cardi because he an androgynous nigga. 
uh it used to be uh uh thugger until thugger said you know he didn't want to do it anymore because his son was copying off of it and some some <laughs> you know and when it comes to musicians people gotta understand people in the arts are fucking crazy like this whole the like the rules about man and woman men shouldn't wear nails and you can't stuff. say nothing after prince rogers nelson when niggas are androgynous or certain type of music classifications regular square people in the everyday world understand We're like these are music niggas but there's some should just go to work people. some music niggas can't pull it off for example if 50 cent wore for war uh pa- like painted his nails niggas would say it was weird and they would be right in saying it because of the type of package he comes in uh you know so some dudes need to be careful because some of y'all like little baby wearing nail polish is weird as fuck uh, he looked weird, and it looked like you were part of that Lucian Grange, that uh, Ruben Bubble weird shit. You know, it just seemed like you allegedly, you you got turned out. So I would tell people, you know, and we know the ones who getting turned out because it just, if it looks weird with your brand, you getting turned out. If it looks weird, you getting turned out. You know, so with the Playboy Cardis and the ASAP Rocky, ain't nobody Uzi, ain't nobody care about them wearing. I don't know what the fuck Playboy nails. said on that type shit beat, but that shit sounded fire. <laughs> I, don't, nah, I don't like that Kamala shit though. That Kamala track is ass. What Kamala track? The one that called no name a uh, uh, a nigger. She with the er at the end. Who did this? She came back out again. Wait a minute. Who? The 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 uh, spicy mayo. Remember years ago she was harassing no name. Harassing her with the uh, gonna be nasty or what? No, no, the one with the that girl group and that Oh Cabela. Non- yeah. You said Kamala. Oh, I don't know I don't the know bitch who, name. Because I, I know, know I know on the West Coast they got a, a a woman. I think she's fucking fly with her voice and everything and her whole look. Her name is Kamaya. She used to be the one singing on the YG tracks. No, no, I ain't talking yeah, about her. Kamaya, yeah, I'm talking about yeah, the Kabbalah girl. Yeah, Kabbalah, like, Kabbalah, Kabbalah, that girl. Like Kamaya dissing? Yeah, uh her. Oh, okay. You talking about the uh, uh, Havana Cuban knockoff Rihanna? Okay, yeah, nah, 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 nah. But uh, yeah, the whole little baby fingernail thing. Um, I don't. Okay, when? Okay, I'll tell you how I feel about it, uh, and I'm just saying as a consumer. Okay, I think little baby when he came out. Um, what I liked about Lil Baby when he did the Southside Freestyle, I fucked with his energy because he just reminded me of like old school Atlanta trap music. It's just money, just music to get your money to. Uh, I'm gonna be real with you. Niggas do not like to see a white man all giddy on top of a black nigga like like on some Charlie Chaplin shit. And to it, your, it, it, it kind of feels weird. It feels weird because it feel like white men are telling you to wear nails and that's really mm. like suspect. Like to your point, look, niggas wore gay looking shit in early hip hop. Sometimes it's a cycle when it come back. Like the uh the Fab Five, that crop top shit with the uh, diamond uh buckle and the, the tight nut hugging pants and the gay captain hat, the YMCA looking shit. Like niggas in the early eighties. That's why people appreciate uh L O Cool J. And Rod Kim so much. Remember, L O Cool J and Rod Kim and Run D M C changed how uh people dressed in hip hop because they looked like yeah. gay lords when they first came out and then you see Rakim and LL and Run DMC with the new sh- like streetwear but Prince knows that you could touch on this too yeah. before then them them dudes look <laughs> they was wearing very feminine stuff no you're not wrong um look all I just know is this I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you all Cause things have changed over time. There, there used to be an era in, in rap music in the '90s where if they said you had two earrings, you was gay, you know. Or if you rolled, if you wore your earring on the left or the right, it, somehow it indicated your sexuality. Uh, men are wearing more jewelry than women in rap. I'm gonna be honest with you all today, okay? So it's kind of ebb and flow. What I will say is this: uh, when Lil Baby came out, he just kind of had um a little bit he, he kind of had like a, a little bit more updated t- when ti was doing trap music when he did the trap music album from the i'm serious to trap music to maybe urban legend little baby kind of was like a, a reintroduction of that type of energy so th- you know a lot of you know a lot of a lot of niggas going to the factories going to work riding to their car going to the job or whatever would be listening to it and 
you know, trap music is just, you know, it's not all about selling drugs just in general. Sometimes they can just, you know, it's motivation prep rally music. Let's go get this money. Yeah, that street right? is looking weird though now. But, you know, back I in think, the 90s, they were slapping those type of execs, DMX and them. I think Lil all Baby. Right, what y'all doing now? Y'all, y'all, y'all think, in uh, white parties with Michael Rubin and. Well, I think Lil Baby after this album here. I think it was just something something weird happened. And I'm going to be honest with y'all. Can I say you know this? Saying, happened, I'm going to tell you where I got worried. <laughs> Can I be real with you all, chat? Tell, tell us. I got worried when Meek Mill reached out to collaborate with Lil Baby. You do know Meek was the one bringing them over to Shit. No Diddy allegedly and to the Michael God Rubin damn. stuff. And you, you know, you heard what Meek Mill said in the interview. Yeah, you know, I was running around with the young boys like little baby, and I'm like, wow, they really working in the studio. So I had to keep an eye on their ass. I mean, whoops, I had to keep an eye on them. Remember that verse when he said, "Lord, forgive me for the things I did with Diddy at the Diddy parties." He had that in a song. Oh, thank you very much, too, uh, AJ. You said Common was in Haiti. See? Yeah, see? He's trying to do some it's voodoo. He's trying to do some witchcraft. He's trying to do to some voodoo to get Serena Williams To get back. that black ass back. He was spitting in the video. I knew what that was about. He was. He had oh, the no. banging on his chest. No, absolutely. Uh, me and Common are almost the same complexion. A nigga that color, I know what that's about. That was about dark black ass. I already know what that was about. This nigga ain't got shit to do with hip hop. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you're right. You're right. Uh, Meek Mill was a hoe getter. He was. He was a hoe getter. He looked like he was a he recruiter. Was, he was. He was recruiter now. And, and Meek don't even rap the same. He don't got no bass in his voice. Little baby at all. Ra- Little baby don't rap the same. I know. I know. Like, the energy oh, the is weak. Is That's on. what I'm saying. Like the street dude. Look. Y'all shouldn't look, do look, it. Look, look. You want to know why Drake don't even Drake need to go back to the mafia shit. You want to know why? Because Street, outside of Kendrick, yeah, Kendrick is different. And Future is different. But outside of that, like, the street dudes ain't street no more. They getting pimped by Ruben. You know, well, they are they are street. You know, so oh, you, they, they turn into street walkers. You know what they say? They are for the streets. Right. Because, like, back then, like, I don't, ain't, ain't none of these dudes giving me the feeling that DMX gave me. You get what I'm saying? Like, DMX, you know. At least you're saying that with, with more intelligence than in, in, than Nikki, because she was like, you know, I'm looking for that X energy, and then she showed up with Meek. I said, well, that ain't it. That ain't it, girl. <laughs> that ain't it. That ain't it. Meek, Meek under the table, if you know what I mean. I'm just saying. Yeah, that's what he on, you know, he he a Takashi 6 9 type of street. I'm just saying. Nigga. I mean, <laughs> you know, I'm just being honest with you all. You know, we, we, we do have to keep it real. You know, I mean, look, the Diddy parties are definitely something suspect. I don't know why Meek Mill was dressed the same much. Have we ever seen a man with matching gear with Puffy in history except Mace in the videos? But Mace um, was the making. The only people that I saw who else was, did we see that was matching? matching outfits wait, wait, was wait, Biggie, did... made, like people who, he, who was signing on yeah. his label. So Biggie, yeah. Mace. I have never seen a rapper or man uh, who was an MC yeah. that wasn't signed to Diddy have matching outfits. And so why, it why, was yeah. very weird. And then why did it look like why did they look like grandma pajamas? <laughs> they look like some golden girl pajamas. We're gonna put that on the screen too, by the way. <laughs> Diddy and Meek Mill matching outfits. But yeah, guys. also guys, check out our Dan Snyder and all that. That's going to yeah. be coming on Tuesday. We're going to get on these white guys again. Because some of y'all crying about us getting on some of these degenerates in our uh, alleged degenerates in our community. But we always smoke on them um, white boy packs. That's a part of that club. With the white pervs. The pervs. The white pervs created that whole industry. Yeah, the white pervs. Because a lot of people get into cute talk about put your chain on, nigga. Y'all, all you crackers out here being bottoms. All y'all with the cock cuck parties and shit like that. Y'all created this this Greco Roman Hollywood culture. So and you know the whole thing where y'all allow all these Woody Allen's to run around. So y'all could try to be cute with these black men in Hollywood, but remember, the majority of the black population ain't in Hollywood. There's way more white people. Way more allegedly Leonardo DiCaprio's and stuff that y'all ain't talking about. Y'all own boys, y'all own homeboys that y'all keeping their secrets, but it shall come to the light. 
But anyway, Ooh, I call out whoever I want to call out. Right. I, you know, I mean, I get it what people are saying, but no, you're right, Sam. I just feel like, you know, uh, this is this has been black business in this regard. Black people have been saying this about Diddy for a long time. They've been sick of the antics. And even what we see know? with Adam 22. Did you see him wearing a thong that had his ass in front of them okay, three black saying, men? That's enough. I'm just saying. That's enough, Sam. Jesus. What? what? Jesus. Adam 22 know, babe, but this was wearing such a, a thong in front of three black dudes. I think Adam Twenty Two is into black men. I think he is too. I think a, some weird someone, shit be going over there. Asking about black men's dick prints and everything, but anyway, listen, because I don't definitely want to get all the way up into that. I, I mean, I get what you say. I believe that happened, sin. I actually believe that happened. But um, there you go, matching outfits on the screen, you know, and uh, <laughs> Meek Mill. Look, we don't know why Meek Mill was fucking with Drake. He might have been attracted to the nigga. He, I think he is. Yeah, it was. I'm gonna be I'm honest like, with I think you. it could have been a thing. Because like a lot that. of these niggas act like, look, I'm gonna keep it real with Drake, man. That bro, like a lot of even these... that dude that called in, he said you had a very, very white voice. Yeah, that was he said you trying to intimidate oh, me. Keep, oh, keep. He says I'm a fan this. of the black man. He and didn't say telling me that. Oh, it's okay. Me this. I, it's okay that if he's that. into the prince, I'm not into him, so it's fine. We're not into, but I'm just saying. What the he was hell like, is this? I'm a fan of black men, not black people, what? not he, black men and black women. He didn't even say black woman. I know. He just said I'm a fan of black men. What happened to them dreadhead oh, con artist just, niggas that look like Drake oh, from? Oh, uh, just. <laughs> what happened to them um, them dreadlock headed uh, holistic niggas that look like J Cole from a different world? They used to say I'm a fan of the oh, black woman. Oh yeah. I'm a, I'm a fan of the. Oh, black I give you the the. the <laughs> Spiritual niggas who who used to be smacked. Well, we we got Umar Johnson. He's still doing it. He's still running through black women. He the, le- he the last the, last nigga one the standing. last of a dying breed. <laughs> he the uh, you know, there should be a bunch of them niggas. Uh, uh, Umar Johnson is funny as fuck. Me, <laughs> he trying to smash single mothers, he mothers is. who probably are married, Shit, I don't know single about. women. Shit. He be with educated black women, ratchet black women. That's why y'all niggas can't like, get rid of him because all these other niggas are like Meek Mill. No, the only thing that could destroy Umar Johnson's career is if he shows up with a white woman. That'll white be it for him. And I wouldn't believe it. <laughs> I would say that it must be AI. I would not ever. If they said he was caught with a white woman, I would definitely say he was drugged. They drugged that big nigga. That's a lie. Uh, yeah, no, that guy did call it. He said he was a fan of the black man. And he, then when I spoke, he got irritated. <laughs> you know, sometimes when you know that it might mar- be that sexual <laughs> aggression. I told niggas, I used to tell sin all the time. I had to cut me a pretty bitch. Yeah, that's what the nigga said to me one time on the uh, the train. No, no, it was the bus. He said, "Yeah, he had to cut me up." He said, "I had to fuck me up a, a pretty nigga." I didn't know who he was talking to, but I didn't look in the mirror every day and say, "I'm a pretty nigga." <laughs> uh oh, someone got an allegation. Umar has a biracial baby in London. <laughs> All right, you trying to destroy Umar, Umar Johnson's career? How do you know this? And if it's mixed, is it mixed with Snow Bunny? And that's the only thing that can get him. If, it, if it's mixed with Snow, because if it's something else, he going to try. Well, she half. How does he ever. How, how do we know this? <laughs> how come I never heard this? Because I'm on the nigga Chitlin circuit. I would have heard it. Did you hear this? Uh, we'll, we'll see. That's that's Umar Johnson because if it ever comes out, that'll be the end of his career. All right. Uh, There's a lot of clout to get off that though. I can't see them. Any being any silent. lasting words though with the whole Kendrick? Oh. Like Kendrick, you you said like yeah. we don't underestimate Drake, but people also shouldn't underestimate uh, Kendrick. And all you people trying to be cute on the black sphere because y'all don't like Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Lamar, the reason why he's getting under Drake's skin. Is because he is a premier MC, also albums, or artist. And he has a platform. He's and a, he's not he's not he's seen a as a, yeah. And also keep in mind too. Drake ain't gonna lose no sleep if somebody wasn't a big deal. Everybody right now that's really riding for hard for Drake publicly is not an ADOS. Yeah, I'm tired of seeing some of y'all immigrants are trying to steal our content. Stop it. You know you don't know nothing about hip hop like this, and you repeating what Thought Crime's saying. We were the ones who talked about Kendrick having a a a, a, a diss track ready for Drake, and Aiden Ross, the academics, gonna eat up our talking points and fucking lie. Stop. Well, shout out to Night Night too, by the way. And yeah, Night Night. Shout out to Night Night, but I'll say this: Look, 
Look, it, it is what it is. And, and Kendrick Lamar is ADOS. Look, I'm, I mean, I know people like, oh, man, I want to hear this shit. But uh, listen, that does mean something to Drake. Well, Drake is half ADOS. No, uh, listen. <laughs> Father from Memphis, Tennessee. Canada doesn't have the most gangster reputation. And Drake is making pseudo gangster music right and now. And shout out to Canadians. Y'all the you third know? country that listens to Thought Crimes the most. We love y'all. Yeah, Drake is making pseudo gangster music right now. So anyway, folks, um, with that being said, uh, Night Night says the heart part six is, yeah, it's going to be fire. I, I think it will be. But, you know, right now, Drake is just, uh, look, uh, look, it, I mean, it's like a Gaston Bazaar uh, mall. It just looks like a, he just it's, everything feels flea market ish to me with him. You know, so look, Kendrick Lamar is a, is a black American uh from the hood you know it's not hood aesthetics not hood light like it's, it's actually hood politics that he's locked into uh future has hood nigga uh politics that he's locked into and uh drake was ingratiated into that space by way of rap a lot and jay prince and all of them people it is what it is but um, apparently the whole hood street culture means something the most to Drake right now. And I also think there's a tie into this because there, because this is where the culture is like outside of Kendrick and, and J Cole rapping about, he's better than every invisible MC that he don't respond to as of yet. Um, but the culture right now is, it's, it's kind of just, everybody's kind of all over the place. They're just singing about killing on tracks and, all this other murder music, post drill music, this, that, and the third. Uh, Prince, look up the pics. That's why Drake is mad. Which, what is he mad about? Okay, so let's see what he's mad about. Yeah, so look, Compton equal. Okay, Kendrick equals Compton. Future equals Dungeon Family. Yeah, you know, and, uh, you know, for Drake, what he has locked in, he'll have locked in is uh, the whole J Prince and all that other stuff, blah, blah, blah. But look, he's just not really been rapping. He's been doing a lot of, look, it's cool. If he's doing party girl music, bad bitch music, party boy music, that's fine. But when he sits on stage and Drake says from his hip hop nerd heart, can't no rapper fuck with me. That obviously the MCs still mean something to you. Absolutely. Absolutely. It still matters. Uh also it says he does respond to the invisible men. Uh y'all don't see them. Uh no, I mean we know that he, they've been snubbing each other. Like what Night Night said, they've been snubbing each other for a while yeah, now. Yeah. Night Night. So they really both been they both been going back and forth with each other. Mm-hmm. Although the J Cole part was the part that Night Night revealed to us because I we were surprised about that part. But uh, it makes sense because it's J Cole. And he's so it's so indirect. Yeah, now so, it makes it, sense. It, it, makes it all sense. makes sense now. But it's, it's so indirect with that. Let me see what else I got here. Drake could have been living his best sassy boy life, but he started hanging. With incels, yeah, the <laughs> incel shit in hip hop was a surprise to the women. You losing Drake, you losing the women. Remember, Star warned you back in the day when you did uh "Baby, You My Everything," and Star warned you. He said, "Don't lose the bitches." And Drake, you are starting to lose the women with this incel shit. You know, a lot of them thought you was attractive. We even had first name. She said she was a Drake angel. And now she's a Drake uh, demon. She, listen, you, you had lost her. Emory said, I actually like Drake's Pops Zoot Suits. Y'all mad because y'all can't dress. Who said that? <laughs> Emory. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't talk about his suits. I'm talking about him losing the women. And you got to be careful, Drake. You do not want it like the her loss and that other shit and the sexy red. Women are, are vain too. You know, you have a bunch of sexy black women in your videos and shit. You're going to wear because, you know, black women are the culture. And uh, just like black men are the culture. That's why Future and them talk about making Stallion, knocking them down, and also uh, that music video. So, you know, well, you, he said, you wanna, I get what you're saying. You got to get uh, the black women. You got to get the black women back. Yeah, he said, uh, Future said that my uh, my women look as bad as Meg the Stallion. <laughs> 
Yeah. Drake was trying to tell us that Meg was ugly. I know what you was trying to do, Drake. Stop it. It's just you ain't. It, it ain't been that. Because it's it's cool if you say that. It's just that your woman would have to look better. That's that's what I'm saying. Was, she would have to like. You remember when Bad and Bougie did a billion views and it had all them beautiful different black women in right. there. Like, uh, listen, it is. Yeah, yeah what like it is. a lot of women know they can clear sexy Ray. <laughs> like, no, I'm just saying. Like, like. Like sexy red, like a lot of black women know they could clear her easily. The average black woman just like easily could clear sexy red, you know. So That's why a lot of niggas like Kodak Black. They knew they look better than the nigga. So fuck out of here, man. Bitch, don't bore me. I fuck with the nigga music, but you know he ain't better looking than me. Mm-hmm. Well, you, you know. That's what they do. Bro. You know, you gotta give it, give it to the, mm-hmm. you know. To sexy red, so other girls can feel that confidence with them tats on their face and shit like Stop that. Stop being sadistic, Sam. <laughs> Stop it. I'm not listening to you with this bullshit. <laughs> not doing this. If, she, if she's just going to be hot sauce for the summer, then let it be. I don't even know what Drake feel insecure about, though. You had Rihanna. You had you had Serena Williams. You had you know. You said to uh, when. when Taraji was at her her best looking, mm-hmm. you know. She was staring and looking off at you, you know. Taraji? Yeah, Taraji P. Henson said she was looking at Drake and she wanted to eat him up, but he was too young, so she said no. You know, she decided like I'm not. Why didn't she feel like he was a man to her? Nah, she just didn't feel like because she has a kid. So she said she she likes to date guys closer to her age because of that. Oh, I forgot about these photos, Sid. Is this real? Yeah, they met one time. This or is a couple. Real? Yeah, that's real. He I'm gave Megan a hug. Right. Hold on, man. I'm putting this shit right back on the screen. Uh, Danny B. Look at this shit. Think that's what uh, uh, Carmen was talking about. Oh my fucking god. Carmen said like Drake is going after her because he didn't smash. Cause she's from Houston. She's the Houston culture. And that's what he has always been obsessed with. He always rapped about Houston, Atlanta, Vegas women. And here you go. Not only that, she's a fucking nerd too. Oh my goodness. Y'all better, Drake, she's you better. A whore. I mean. Drake, you better get your ass in the booth. She's a nerd who likes to smash. I mean, yeah. I know she's going on a sex fast now, but she was a, a little naughty type of nerd. Yeah. And she from like a naughty uh, hood nerd type shit. Well, Drake is a naughty nerd. He's just not from the hood. Right. He's just missing the hood part. But yeah. women were. He probably I, thought that would have been an easy sell. Yeah. Women like, were into him before, though. It's just like he fucking up with the women right now. He just wow. is. You know? <laughs> Daddy B says common is a pass around. <laughs> common is a pass around, though. He don't mind it, though. He like being common, like being a pass around. He don't care. <laughs> yeah, nigga don't care. You should you should own yourself. But i I'm glad she brought this up. No, that's a good point, Carmen. Uh I forgot about these photos, Sam. Hey, he been so at her neck for so long, I forgot about this shit. Well, there you go. Um Actually you can see her eyes. Look at her eyes here. Looks very uh that's very interesting. So maybe he thought he could close the deal. Emery said Freudian slips in. Oh, with the I know. I wasn't calling Megan a whore. That's not what I meant. Look. No, it's just like you got different what were you type of I'm trying to say you got different type of nerd girls, right? So you got nerd women who like relationship type. They go from relationship to relationship. Then you got the nerd women that like, you know, wet ass pussy. They like to fuck. You know, they like to wear their little costumes and shit. And wow. they like they like to wop around, you know? And Megan likes to wop around. You know, she got a little for her and she loves to fuck. Although she knows now that she got a she can't just be giving it up to anybody she's attracted to because they try to kill her. Yes, little for the ascendant can means people can get uh obsessive to the point where they could tr- try to hate you because they uh they really <laughs> they they getting on me yeah, in the chat. Yeah, they get, look, so everybody they that be living me. it up, we say <laughs> They getting sin on me. Said whore. They getting on me in the chat. Look Y'all at that. Y'all see how foul mouth sin is. <laughs> no, I mean, look, Megan likes to be nasty. She already said it. You know, There's nothing wrong with that. She a nasty mm-hmm. nerd. It's the same thing with sexy red. I mean, I mean, I'm just being honest. Yeah, she but, talked about brown booty holes and yeah, stuff. Yeah, but sexy red looked like a her in the face. Though. Look, there's a lot of niggas that are into the you know the dirty feet thing. I'm, I'm not. I mean, you know. Mm. Yeah. 
I'm just saying. Mm-mm. I don't have a listen. It is what it is. Sexy Red has every right to exist. All I'm saying is when Drake comes in trying to stunt on niggas, I'm like, but Drake, sir. Stop it. Order in the court, sir. Yeah, I mean. Order see, in the court. I don't care that if, if if that is Drake's baby, I wouldn't care. No, no. I, I know. Care. But I'm just saying how he stunts on niggas, though. Drake be stunting on a lot of niggas. I'm like, but brother, you run around here with sexy red. Come on, show. Yeah, I'm just saying, making this stunt, she got a little of ascendant in her ascendant. So, like, you saw what happened with Tori going, short ass going crazy over her. Like, she got a type of thing where exes compassionately hate her now i'm not gonna lie to you Sam. And when you got that lilith in the ascendant and you put that that wet pussy on anybody that you into they gonna a lot of them gonna be enemies of the past i'm gonna tell you this we was rocking with meg i was like man yeah, you know, she's snapping on the track she acting like ronnie from a players club oh yeah Tear with it in, right she flowing like pimp c hitting hard with the end rhymes like bun b i'm like yeah then she showed up with Tory Lanez. I was like, Ooh. I mean, she that's who she found attractive. I mean, I mean, I, I, mean, I wouldn't. I mean, but listen, I'm being real with you. This is how I judge the situation. I just, it, I, I get, thought, I, I, I thought point, she though. was more player than that. You know, no, because she's making player music. Girl, I, did, I, yeah, I thought she was more player than I that. I was like, girl, come on, you supposed said, to be eesh. like well, Megan can end up with Tory Lanez got a scarecrow nest on his head. <laughs> <laughs> I agree, he's talented, but yeah, that nigga like. Make it can easily get guys that look like a ten. Hey, listen, easy. And brothers easy do not de- brothers do not defend that because a lot of you brothers, you know, you look better than Tory Lanez. Because <laughs> I mean, some niggas defending Tory, I'm like, but brother, he would. Well, like, you know, sometimes with women, there's a spectrum. That yeah. again, with with Tory, not for me because he's a, a a violent little midget. But um, Probably bite your knees. Sometimes women be like, okay, if he looks okay or a little bit uh, below average, but he could dress well or that, he's really gifted. That shark tooth nigga look like a criminal. I agree with you. That was a criminal. But some women like criminals. I I look. Can you I don't, imagine getting your ass kicked by someone that small? I well, that's why he wasn't going. We already know physically Megan could have whooped Tory's ass. That's why he, he allegedly pulled out that And if gun. she was drunk, she wasn't feeling shit. She was boxing that nigga's ass into the corner. She looks like she could box. Because Megan looked like she could fight tall niggas, too. She does. All right. But, so, uh, but but you know. I'm just Tory saying. Tory kept that gun on him for a reason. Yeah, because he, sh- can't, he can't beat nobody yeah, when he, physically. He, when, he, be, he be. he I've never seen an article where he fought somebody one-on-one. Yeah, well, you know. I'm just saying, you know, she she showed up to the party. I keep it consistent. <laughs> she showed up to the party with Tori. I, I can like, see Damn. why people get irritated. We do talk a lot of shit. We can't help it, though. <laughs> so does Donald Trump. <laughs> no, no. He got him president. <laughs> he kissed my ass on I that mean, one. We, it, I don't believe nothing people say. It can't be helped. I'm sorry, guys. Just it's just who we are. Uh, we're not the <laughs> breakfast club now. <laughs> we tell y'all the truth. We just tell you how we feel. Y'all say the same shit, too. We just got microphones. But I'm just saying, like, you know. I didn't look. Meg was rapping and she showed up with Tori. I was like, oh, shit. Damn. Damn, he about to pull her. All right, well, whatever. You know? And then, you know, Drake is Drake is telling us in so many words that, you know, Megan that seemed like Meg the Stallion looks like Forrest Gump in the face. We all know that's a lie. But then he's telling us, you know, Sexy Red is the baddest bitch on the planet. So I said, look, nigga, uh, let's get back to Canada. All right, let's, let's get back to it. All right? You know, but... Look, it is what it is, you know. Um, Drake was over there. What was it? The Ice Spice? Oh, what you call it? Old Spice? And then you had the uh, Prince, Prince, let's what's say. the white girl? Uh, Iggy? No, the one that he was uh, doing an interview from the bed. Oh, uh, that girl is not high. Right, but they they and made her a thing though. Drake fucked her though allegedly, oh and God. fucked over her marriage. Like Drake, Sorry, that was God. that was not a attractive white woman. Listen, man, I'm just saying. You took a picture one time with a Swedish ten, and knocked down a three. What is going on with you, Drake? But also going back to um, Mr. Astrology, he was talking about y'all hate short men. There are a lot of handsome short men like Tate. I'm not dating any men, so it doesn't matter to me. Yeah, <laughs> like the <laughs> shit don't matter to me. Said, hold on. <laughs> but like that, the actor was Lorenz Tate, right. something like that. There's a lot of beautiful, handsome short kings. Okay, just because we call, tell it, Tory don't look good. We gotta He's be careful talented saying. as fuck, but he don't he don't look good. I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest with you. You know, uh, now nah, I've been around a lot of my, dudes. My that Prince was, said uh, that bird nest on the top of yeah. his head. Again, if you see Tory Lanes, 
and somebody makes a joke about him and it affects your self-esteem. I'm not saying Mr. Astrologer, but look, you might have to reassess your self-esteem. I mean, it looked because, like he had liver uh, issues or something. I don't know what the fuck was going on with his hair, with Tory, the carpet up there. Uh, pretending to be a Philadelphia nigga. Yeah, I didn't like that. Stop. I mean, Why you was pretending to be Philly? You should have yeah. rapped Toronto. Tory Lames was corny. And if, if uh, listen, for some of the fellas, if that hurts your feelings about that, then you have to reassess your self esteem. Yeah, why your self esteem is wrapped up in Tory? Yeah, you know. Shit, he ain't even the best of y'all. Y'all, y'all, if y'all yeah, tripping over on. that, then I mean, y'all trip over you anything. Remember one time you said something about Meek Mill? You just said it passing, and the guy was like, man, you hate dark skinned men. I just, that's <laughs> definitely not the case. Said, that's not sin. Sin is not And bad. I'm not going to list the list of dark skinned men that I think are handsome be- out of respect for Prince, but because that's just it. But, but legit. it was a it was a hustle. Yeah, it's it a, a hustle. hustle. I that. I am not a colorist. Yeah, I yeah. think all different types of shades of black men are very very yep. attractive, yep. and yep. I think yep. black men yeah. are some of the most attractive yep. men here on earth. Like now, Jimmy, to me, uh, they definitely number one. And then I got yeah. my the other groups that I think are like two and three. But yeah, um, for no, me, I hey, ain't a hater. There's black people and there's no other group. <laughs> I'm not joking. No, I'm not. But listen, uh, Jimmy <laughs> Iovine is a colorist. Uh, he that. was ugly, man. That's a, that's Jimmy Iovine is an ugly man. He said Don Richards was ugly. He should not be talking. Jimmy Iovine looks like Flint Flintstone's foot in the face. <laughs> that's an ugly man. It's an and, ugly and, man. Men, we have to be comfortable and he saying was calling this. Calling Don Richard a queen. Yeah, let me see who the a other beautiful side. black woman yeah. calling calling her let me see who the other ugly. Yeah. And, and no Diddy allowed it. What yeah. a punk punk ass. Dr. He won't allow a ugly smudget cracker. To tell, to call Don Richards, yeah. who is attractive, mm-hmm. ugly. Yeah. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, you know. He probably finds Dr. Dre pretty, though. Let's see. Who <laughs> yeah, so, you know, let me see something here. Yeah, because uh, they, they, a lot of them be tripping. So, I'm just going to say that. But, no, I don't. Uh, Come to me. I don't, I don't rock with any of it. No, but Tory Lanez, we got to understand. Tory, see, the reason why, fellas, I'm going to say this, you all. It's very important for you all that men should be able to check other men. If a, if a nigga's in your face and he acting like he can compete with you somewhere and you can see he's visibly ugly, he's got crust around his lips. It's okay. That man is ugly. Don't make you gay. It makes you confident in yourself because if you sit up there and try to act like, well, we all ugly. No, nigga. <laughs> oh, wait. Wait. Like, stop it. Stop it! And I'm not—I'm not here to, you know. Again, I let people do their own thing, but I've gotten into it with other men that try to play me. Like, dog, you're not gonna play me now. Now you take your ugly ass over there and push yourself back in your mama's womb. Stop it! All right. So again, that is okay because you gotta—you gotta keep it real. Like, let's be real. That's why them niggas was hating on Tupac. They shot that nigga up in the elevator and tried to stab him. Nigga just walking around with jewelry on. Uh, make sure y'all go to uh, the Dummies Cauldron yes. and Be More's Patreon as well. She yeah. just put up some more PDFs and some yeah. uh, stuff that y'all may want to look at. And also our Patreon, we're going to have an exclusive Esoteric stream uh, coming up for y'all. Uh, Be More, can you also put our Patreon in the, in the uh, uh, put it in a, a chat so everybody could go click over there. Support the movement. The Think Tank is an independent movement. You know, uh, I know there's certain people that we upset their leaders and we upset their little think tanks and stuff like that. But thought crimes, we have to say how we feel and how we see it. We're not here to lie to people. And also because of us, we out here telling people to talk about Lucian Grangemore. Finally, these fucking white people are finally talking about Lucian Grangemore in Fox News. Thank you. Bring them up. Bring them up. Because these are the people who are at the heads at the top of this alleged... Uh, sex trafficking ring bring their names out bring them out don't be crying because uh some black deviants are being mentioned if you want them white people to get what they uh, get in trouble bring them out yeah you know so you know uh gangster charlie says but then they say why she with him uh, well, that's for the women, uh, gangster astrology, and that's for that man to be confident about that. I'm, I'm just being honest with you all. He was you know, talented. But, he but just, gangst- uh, you know, I don't. But gangster yeah. astrology, I'm going to just keep it real with you all. Like, brother, you know it. Like, there is a culture in our space of men who actually look decent, who are handsome. They get, they actually catch more hate than anyone else. Why do you and, think they was trying to make uh, Drake ugly himself up? 
Yeah, look what they doing with Drake. When Drake came in and he looked like the boy next door and uh, J. Cole. Actually, this is what the cleanest class of niggas we didn't see from Big Sean to J. Cole to Drake and Crit. You know, uh, all of these look like regular uh, black boys. You know, and here come Diddy, attracted to every nigga. <laughs> I want that one, that one, that one. Oh man, I just get I just get French Montana. Damn, that sucks. That egghead. French Montana. He got the ugly one in the crew. He tried to get the Drake. He he tried to get the Coles. He tried, he wanted the big Sean that he got left with potato head uh uh French Montana. Yeah. Drake's ugly brother. Yeah, like if you really think about it, think about it, you all. Like when I'm, I'm just saying, let's just be honest. When Wale, Kid Cudi, Crit, Drake, Cole, Kendrick, the all of these niggas was very clean looking niggas. Here come except Crit. Here come Diddy or predatory your ass being attracted to all of the clean young niggas. Then I had stupid niggas coming. Yo, man, it's like they all. I said, actually, this is. This this I'm gonna be honest with you. These niggas here look like um they look like the career fest niggas. They yeah. all look like they're going to a career fest when they all came in. Yeah, you had one nigga like future, but honestly, everybody knew future wasn't on drugs like that because he looked healthy in the face. When that nigga stepped in and smiled with all them teeth, I don't really do drugs like that. That's I could tell nigga. You know. Like when they said Trippy Red was on drugs, I was like, I believe it. It's not, you know, I believe that shit, you know. So, it, absolutely not. You know, you, you had a lot of people trying to kind of play folks. You know, and I, I do feel fellas should be very careful of who they ambassadors. Like, to me, Andrew Tate is a goofy guy. He's he's funny looking to me. You know, uh, he sounds like he's whining. You know, you have to understand how a woman needs to be controlled. And it's like that. Like, What are we talking about, Andrew? We're talking about Bugattis. Bugattis. He's everywhere. <laughs> Aiden Ross sniffed his chair when he got up. Well, Aiden found him very attractive. <laughs> like he was talking about Drake's oh, private parts. Say that again. You're very, right about very that. Gay. The, but a, but you know if Aiden's bisexual or whatever then that's you know that's him. Do you think but, there's a okay? I'll say this then. Do you think there's becoming more of a comfortable space? In the culture for those bisexual men, because it seems like no, because too- none of them are coming out. Because okay, because what they Aiden doing, does, Aiden is, doing weird stuff, but he didn't come out. It's, and be it like, is I'm, very homoerotic behavior. Yeah, like he was sniffing. It, it, you think he got a thing for like? I think he got a thing for mixed black men. I he likes the mixed. Yes. Yeah, because he was sniffing. Bu- and Mr. Bugatti is mixed. Is mixed, and, and, Drake. and Drake is. He loved the mix. Did you see that phone call he had with him? <laughs> Yo, man, yo, Drake, man. I'm like, your yo, shaft. yo, your shaft, man. Like, it wasn't even fully hard. Like, if it was hard, your cock would have been like 12 Ooh. inches, man. I don't know. Yeah, it, he, I don't know. Aiden has a thing for mixed men. He do. Yeah, it is what it seems like. He love the mixed. There's a, I'm just saying, there's a lot of fellas. I Chocolate mean, with some milk added in it. Y'all seen a lot of these guys up under this whole Diddy thing? It turns out they, they were sorry, ladies. They just, they just wasn't really that into women like that. Which is good because you don't need no woman uh, here being punched into some glass windows because a guy's mad that he's bisexual. Well, Diddy was beating up bitches too. Throwing him down the steps. Yeah, but look what he did to the, the legendary choreographer. Yes, he yeah, did. So, well, I mean, it's an allegation from it, but still, you know, that's what he allegedly did. You see did. them trying to halfway talk about it. This is a struggle. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a struggle for them to talk about Diddy. Is there any else, anything else you want to say, Prince, before we... Uh... We got to go 12 hours, sir. We about to... <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. You, ah! nah, we get you a stand for that mic. Nah, we got yeah. so much to do. We have so much to work on. We we've done 12 hour streams before and 20 yeah. hour streams before. We're about to do one tonight. I'm about uh, to. I'm about to. I'm about to hit I'm the she- to. hit the sheets. I'm about to. <laughs> All right. So, uh, oh, get over to the Patreon, ladies and gentlemen. We do have new and exclusive content up there on the Patreon. Um, we're going to be uploading some more coming up too, by the Come way. Come on, we're going up against a lot. We're going up against a lot of think tanks, a lot of Fed, CIA, people who bought and paid for, people who slept their way up. Come on now. Support uh, the movement. I'm sorry. Jay Coffee. He got Jay Cole's picture. It is funny. <laughs> Jay Coffee. <laughs> Wait, what Jay Coffee said? Jay Coffee says, um, 
Af- academic said that Kendrick needs to drop a diss for Drake to finally respond to him. What do you think? He I- got that from us, uh, Jay Coffee. We said, okay. we said because of, also because of Night Night. So shout out to Night Night. We were the first ones to say that Kendrick's like that was a setup, like uh, infrared with Pusha T was a setup, and we said to Drake. He needs to be careful. If he's going to respond, he has to come prepared because Kendrick is going to come prepared like Pusha T was. So, you know, y'all can have love for the with the fat nigga, but he's copying off our fucking commentary. Well, here's what I think about it, and I don't disagree and, with you. And it. Prince is more, you know, chill yeah. You about this with me. Like, well, you don't get somebody, yeah. irritated with the academics and stuff, but I, he irritates me because... You know, he be saying our commentary like, uh, and, and then act like he the one who thought about it. Like, nigga, we know you got a yeast brain. And you be on that fucking uh, yak all the time and shit. Okay? Stop acting like you be coming up with these these thought processes. You don't. Stop it. Yeah, so, no, I don't disagree with that. I get what you're saying. I don't have a problem with it. Here's my thing about do, it. Do, 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 do. This is all I'm saying with this. And more tune for your head top, so watch how you speak on my name, you know? Nobody, honestly... How can I say this? It's, when a nigga, when you when you gotta keep biting, you, you had to keep chewing, right? No diddy, right? You, you gotta keep chewing. So um, we'll lay claim to what we put out there. You know, uh, can't nobody take nothing from what the universe uh, has been ordained before I was born or Sim was born. That's how I feel. That's how strong my faith is. You know, we didn't been through some flagrant shit with some of these niggas. You know, David Banner got cooked right at the time when everybody black, when he put out the God box, which was, it was a a dope piece of work. So um, for us to say what we said concerning him, look, I mean, maybe somebody else probably wouldn't have said nothing because they felt like, oh, you know, the black community fuck with David Banner. But I'm like, fuck David Banner. (laughs) Fuck that nigga. Fuck that water buffalo back nigga, right? We we even made, we was even joking about it. We was like, yo, this is not like... You know, there's certain niggas you yeah, go up against, know, it could be harder. Like, David right. Banner, come on. that's a We can do that with our eyes closed. Now, um, as far as the commentary game goes, look, I get it. You niggas, uh, y'all don't know where to go with shit. Y- y'all got insiders, and they ain't telling you shit. And, and a lot of you all, I just keep it real, a lot of you all are not that sophisticated or intelligent, and nor do you know your roots in hip-hop. You don't know any roots in hip-hop. And you don't got These the, are think the same. Tank. The Think Tank will definitely you, fry y'all asses. Y'all you, keep playing around with us. You were trying to commentate on hip hop, and a lot of you niggas said fuck hip hop. Y'all said it yourselves. Y'all said y'all don't fuck with hip hop. Fuck Jay Z's four 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 old ass. Fuck Rakim. Fuck Nas. Fuck to pimp a butterfly. So as far as I'm concerned, it's null and void for you to even try to articulate this battle in a manner. And I think the commentary from what I've seen from everyone that has been mentioned has been largely boring. Just and I'm not talking about the hip hop channels. Not that the really, hip hop channels. I ain't that talking about. We're we talking t- about the people who be superficial, but then stealing points from people who aren't superficial. Well, you know, send those how I am. You know, whether it's academics, Aiden Ross. All I'm waiting is for people to get stupid. That's all. And plus, you I know, always. That's why I'm usually more calm because I just feel like, look, I know damn well when it comes to this other side of the game, the roast game all this other shit being raw in the microphone i don't see none of them boys doing anything they over there they don't so. respect the ca- the craft like academics don't even like kendrick you don't even respect what he do and this is why you're not a great commentator based off of this whole beef this is why you got to steal our points because in order to really help any of these dudes on this on, on either side you have to respect what they do but you know that's what got his ass in trouble with that dumbest live shit I'm not sweating none of these niggas. I'm just being honest with you. They're not going to be here, folks. First of all, they don't fuck with black Americans like that. That's number one. They just don't. They can try to pretend, but it all, all the self-hate shit, it always comes out. Okay? For us to call this in the way that we're calling it, folks, we are from this shit. I'm from this shit. That's what I'm telling, so I'm telling Drake, nigga, I'm from Atlanta. I can tell you right now where you're fucking up at. First of all, stop trying to make that nigga's music. You didn't put him on the same album with you with 21 Savage because Future has his chance on tracks to outshine you, nigga. 
And y'all both are hook sing songy ass niggas. Of course, it'll be easy to son someone like 21 Savage. Even having him doing 20% of vocalization on the album indicates things of that nature. You needed his energy more than anything else. Really, 21 Savage should have just been ad-libbing on every Drake record on that album. <laughs> so as long as you as long as you have the truth and you're moving with transparency, I'm authentic to myself, you all. I don't have no insecurity about women. I don't have no homoerotic fetishes with other men. I'm you don't not like other men voices? <laughs> your Barry White voice. You trying to intimidate me. Get off the phone, cracker. That's what white racist men say to me. Right. Okay? <laughs> the phone. So I'm very I'm very comfortable in who I am. That's why I'm not I'm not worried about none of these niggas talking or trying to bite up talking points, you know. Oh, real quick, uh, just to get political real quick, Coleman is a op. Coleman Hughes. Coleman Hughes is a fucking op. We talked about him before. He's yeah. backed by, he was trained by a CIA agent. He was trained by the author of the bell curve. So you just took it curve. in a whole different direction. I just got to say I know, real quick. Babe, hold Charles on, hold Murray. On, hold on, just to so bring, yeah, hold on. I mean, hip hop is, is, I know, is political see, too. Don't, turn, don't do it while I'm talking. <laughs> I just have to I say know. real quick. It's she gonna always, be a she'll be going in another direction. No, I'm just saying. See, I ain't. We got to say it. I know, but I just had to say that. I can't stand that little bitch. They always I have know, these uh, fake Negro intellectuals that they come and create out of a factory to go up against black policies, reparations and stuff. He's a fucking pawn. I just I wanted know. to say that real quick. But isn't the rest and of them? And he's fucking basic. But they all are, though, Sam. Yes. Yeah. Look, I, this is what I love about Sin. Sin is see, that's what I say. You gotta find find you women. That's what I'm saying for some of these fellas out here that are struggling. You have to f- find you women that have some kick to them, that they fight in the right direction. They're not fighting you. Sin's got she's got all of that. I just, he's such a fucking liar. I don't even but, like the view, but I'm just saying he was on there lying, saying nobody. There's no think to about how you have the bell curve cracker mentoring you, but you don't have no no uh you uh, you wasn't made in the fucking lab. Here. That's why we here. <sighs> fucking liars, a lot of them. That's why we here. Ugh. He a T Moo Tavis Smiley. He is. He's a T Moo Tavis Smiley. Shout out to Tavis Smiley. All right. But going back, because we went over there, going back to the other point. Look, I have seen academics talking points. It it does smell familiar. I have seen Aiden Ross, and you can actually see how many of these people are studying you. And we've seen this before. We've already talked about this. I, we've seen it with the, the Night Hot ninety seven, Power one hundred five. We've seen it on all these. We've seen it. Okay. Like somebody said in the chat, quietly thought crimes is a plug for a lot of folk. I'm very confident in myself. Sin is very confident and fixed in herself as well. That's one of the reasons why a lot of times some of these old dusty ass offers is, and even coming through uh, the revolt shit, we've said no to. Revolt got a new uh, owner though from Essence. The owner of Essence. So we'll see what happened. And also astrology so, guy, when you said, well, we got astrology on our side. Academics could have gotten to astrology if he didn't allegedly uh, mess with that uh, girl incorrectly. That's his fault. He screwed over it. That girl said he allegedly uh, sexually assaulted her. So It's not going to happen. I'm going to tell you this, Mr. Astrologer. I'll tell you the reason why it's not going to happen. You got to remember, the culture for them to thrive is based on insecurity. Dumb it down. It's based on insecurity. It's not a, it's not a high self-esteem culture. I'm gonna be real with y'all. Look, Drake is he his own free nigga, but some of the shit he does, I never put. I ain't putting no fucking tats on my face, nigga. I got a career after this rap shit. Maybe some of you niggas get fucked up with it, you know? I mean, they twenty one savage is it a knife or a sword or a bat, right on your forehead? So the culture that you see that a lot of these folks are being championed in, what can I say? I mean, any man that can comfortably run with Myron Gaines and says, that's my nigga, there's, honestly, there ain't nothing for Prince Solomon else to say. Dog, you got to you gotta deal with your own self. You get what I'm saying? You know, look, they, they tied into some, they into some weird shit. Some, some of these boys, some of these, these streamers, they being accused of sexual assault. 
Some of them are in sexually compromised positions. They don't even need to go over to Diddy and them boys. You know, they got women allegedly getting hurt here and there. Man, I ain't got time for that. I ain't never been a part of no Cluckberg crew growing up. I, anytime, even if somebody got stupid or if there was a stupid nigga in our crew, we slide they bitch ass right up out the crew. You're scaring away the women. All right? But no, what Sin is saying is absolutely true about Coleman Hughes. Uh, we was going to cover more of that. Yeah, we were. To, just give him a taste of it. Fuck that, uh, that basic now, Sin, bitch. Yeah, Sin was telling me about that he'd been rolled out recently. He'd been rolled out yeah. again. We talked about him yeah. uh, years ago. Yeah. A lot of these... Um, Negroes. CIA agents, these puppets. They, we, Prince and I, we'd be talking about these people five years ago. <laughs> people uh, tell us about them, and we'd be like, we yeah. knew about Ben Shapiro being an agent when he was uh, getting into beats with uh, Talib and nobody knew who he was. We knew he was going to be big because they was going to make him big. Like, all these motherfuckers are made out of factories and it's it's annoying to keep seeing the formula work. Well, they're going to always keep being updated. You know, they're always going to be out there. That's why I thought crimes is out there. You know, that's why the people in Think Tank, that's why you all have your own mind. You, look, you have. I, I, I ask you, to if you watch everybody then you can see where the inconsistencies are I, i'm not one of these people i think people should be able to see the evidence for themselves i think reading rainbow lavar burton was one of the best things to happen to black american television when he said you don't have to take my word for it lavar burton would be up there recommended to children you know this is a dope ass book you kids be like what he says look little man you don't have to take my fucking word for it and some books look ugly to me i said you right i'm not gonna listen to you nigga <laughs> <laughs> but Coleman Hughes, Ben Carson, um, you go through the list of them. They were they are all projects uh, that were created by think tanks. You know, if you really look at Coleman Hughes, there's not that much depth in his conversations. More Coleman than Ben Carson, because you know? Ben Carson actually legitimately created a, a career as a surgeon. He's the real deal. He just went, he, uh... he went up, but the the new baby, the Ben Shapiro's, the Coleman's, yeah. them motherfuckers are all made oh, from yeah, a lab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? Um what's the other one that the gay Republican that just he talking about y'all want to counsel me. Oh the one with that rug on his head? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Rob Smith. Yeah. So Andrew the, Gillum niggas. Yeah, the uh the, the he, when those those white dudes got done nothing on his face. Now he coming in like an independent yeah. No one gonna take you serious with that perm, ugly ass rug on the top of your fucking head. Just have some yeah. fucking dignity. They don't though. They already bought and paid for, babe. You know, and and that's our job here is to highlight and, and break down the infrastructure, uh, from the Coleman's to the Candaces. It's all the same energy. A lot of times you'll find that you know, in many regards, they are sponsored by the same think tanks. They are awarded. The same scholarships that take them to the same universities and institutions. I, yeah, that's yeah. why. I mean, I do like that Candace shooting at her masters, though. That shit is funny because it is making Ben Shapiro look really bad in the Daily Wire. But there's more coming. It's like with the crowd allegedly being gay. You yeah, know, he, uh, he used to make jokes to, about that. Trying to fight them charges. Look, when when he was out there kneeling on trying to reenact George Floyd, and I looked at him, and he says, you know, and an alpha male, I said, it uh, don't seem that straight to me. An alpha male wouldn't be uh, abusing his pregnant wife, or have ex-wife, he, I should say. Well, have y'all all noticed something? Allegedly. <laughs> and it's something about pregnant women that makes these niggas angry. <laughs> you know, same thing with that whole shit with Diddy and that pregnant girl in the closet. And did you see on camera with Steven Crowder? And she says, let me have the car, the keys to the car. And he said, how did he say? He says, and I don't like it either. <laughs> and I don't like it either. <laughs> <laughs> These uh, are the alpha males. Even with Coleman Hughes, like, I'm going to be honest with you. He's a, it, I know, sir, but we, let me just say this before you do your thing. All right, babe. When he's in the middle of debating and pontificating and deliberate, deliberating his, his talking points, right. like when he was on The View, it just seems like his BDNF receptors were slow. And, and, and mind you all, these are old women. These are all old women. And he couldn't, it, it was just weird. So they definitely rolled him out. And you got to keep in mind, notice all of these talking points. They all end up at the bus stop of anti-blackness. It don't matter who you're talking about. They all are. What, 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 does, does Coleman Hughes have any other philosophy 
No, he's just stuck on black people. That's what I'm saying. These <laughs> motherfuckers are stupid. What are, what, are you going to write on anything else? No. Is this your whole thing is to try to be an obstacle? For black people. For black people to the reparations. This dumb fucker going to say, well, no one has gotten reparations for things that happened a very long time ago. They were appropriately... Uh, uh, dealt with with the people who are still alive. That's not true because the descendants of Holocaust survivors still get reparations. Well, okay, even when we talk about so that. So what the hell are you talking about, repa- dumbass? Reparations comes in the forms of subsidies. Um, they do come in forms of, of course, uh, liquidation of assets in certain regards. Uh, sometimes it can come in the form of punitive damages. There's many variations of what you would call reparations. It's not just, you know... Um, a ghetto hood nigga check. That's how they're trying to make it out to be. And again, I saw the same thing when Candace Owens was talking to the streamers. Look, all of these talking points are the same to me. And it just seems like... It seems like... Look, it's just anti-black shit. And if, if you want to ask me, I've seen academic side with some of these talking points. I've seen a lot of these other folks side with these talking points. I seen the, the with Aiden Ross, the little three black boys was telling Aiden Ross about Jews run the world and all this other stuff. You and man, Aiden. You the, yeah, he said, y'all the top man. If you ask him, well, well Prince Solomon, why aren't you really all that angry? I, are you serious? Have you heard how these people think? I'm not confused. Cowards. I'm not confused. Confusion has an expiration date for the individuals that walk around with it as a backpack. You know, it may seem like, for instance, it may seem like people are up and balling right now. Look at this whole media industry, the hip hop media industry. They're all quiet right now. At one point in time last year, the year before, you couldn't tell them that being in those boats over there before the hole started sticking out of them, that wasn't the space to be. You know, if you're sitting across from from allegedly Diddy. Oh, you at the Rock Brunch? Jay-Z canceled the Rock Brunch that very year when them that lawsuit was brought up against Diddy. You know, we done seen this over and over, and it's always this. You had to keep in mind, this is where you all are supposed to have real faith at. You got to understand, the authentic motherfuckers always shine at the end of the day. Whether people agree with it or not, the person remaining true, fighting to the spirit of what it is. Look, that nigga Tupac been dead 27 years. That motherfucker's ghost is still here. Friends, they gonna say we getting a TED talk like Drake did on the stage. <laughs> but nobody dissed I'm us. I'm gonna hold my head up high. Nobody dissed us, though. No. Nobody dissed us. No. I, I don't. They never do. Yeah. So, I don't listen. I mean, Drake got some other shit going on. If he don't believe, listen. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm just telling you if it's me. I wouldn't, first of all, I wouldn't be running around with sex red. But if it was me and I'm having fun, I'm having fun. That's it. I don't give a fuck about Kendrick or, or whoever, the future niggas. I don't care like that. You know, but we don't care now with a lot of this shit. But if you're talking but about what's going on. It's competition, baby. It's hip hop, baby. Yeah, that's Drake. He said that he was the number one lyricist. Now, when you get into the space of Coleman Hughes and, and to Sin's point, that's where you actually see us turn up more so at. Like, I don't care about no fucking streamers that are confused and sniffing men's chair and telling us that they're straight. <laughs> you you literally smelling someone's a man's ass crack. <laughs> a man's butt hair. <laughs> like, I mean, just being honest with you, like, what am I supposed to do with that? There's certain shit I'm just not supposed to really. I don't really care about it. It's not a competition thing for me pretty, with that. Pretty gross. Yeah, I mean, we 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 do our own shit. We you know we carry out what we're supposed to. We we're very we appreciate we appreciative of you all. But I mean, just give me the real truth. I don't know what the fuck to do with that shit. It sometimes remind me sometimes in Atlanta when niggas would try to bring someone uh, attention, bring me to someone's attention. Like man, man, I'm like bro, man, you serious? Bro? They said that man was sucking dick behind the dumpster. Uh, what am I supposed to do with that? Man, but he said, I will go knock the nigga out. You got to <laughs> always look beyond the veil. And yeah. the reason why they right. get mad at us, because we always look beyond the veil. Yeah. On that note, everyone, that, we that love y'all. No sin. We appreciate no sin. y'all. Sin. Sin. <laughs> go ahead, babe. And we just really appreciate the fact that y'all have been supporting us from day one. Mm-hmm. We just love y'all. We really do. 
All right, y'all. Okay, get over to the Patreon too. By the way, we have some more stuff that uh, has been uploaded, and we're going to be uploading some more stuff as well concerning that. Uh, we're going to be talking about Coleman Hughes though too. By the way. Uh, so I'm glad Sin did introduce that because we do need to highlight that. And then also this level of generational think tank um, mascots that have been rolled out in front of you all. And it's been made to look like these are just organic YouTubers. Right. This is an organic situation. And they're not. They're, a lot of them are very so much sponsored by billionaires. You know, and they're trying to affect the culture. Right. And Aiden Ross plays on both sides because he purposely snitched on Andrew Tate. That whole shit where he was like, how he looked at the phone and he's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to be making yeah, a lot of content. And uh, Andrew Tate said I need to hurry up and go over there because he's about to leave Romania. He 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 basically was snitching. Purposely. Aiden Ross. Aiden, Aiden is, go ahead, not someone to be trusted. Well, he's going to get academics in trouble. Watch. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Out. Peace. Out. They don't, they don't have shit figured out yet. Why do you give a fuck? Where's the kaboom? There was supposed to be an earth shattering kaboom. If he dies, he dies.
Pitchy on the mo. And don't bother me.